it's episode 134. We're talking to a Canadian. They are real. It's not an urban legend, actually. <laughs> no, we've had Will before. He's real, too. All right, let's do our sponsor shout outs, and then we'll get into talking about just all kinds of ball python stuff. We're going to go balls to the wall. We haven't done a ball episode in a couple of weeks. Uh, BetDNA.com for all of your testing needs. Use code hashtag shit happens for $5 off the crypto panel. You never know when shit will happen to you, so you will maybe want to test. Please. <laughs> Seriously. Just do it. I'm serious. Sorry, that was weird. Anyway, Shane Kelly, Small Town Exotics. He is going to Tinley. He will be there. You can go to his Morph Market or Husbandry Pro Store right now. Look at something, buy it, and pick it up. We love that. Small Town Exotics. I don't think... I don't even know what his inventory is going to be. He didn't tell me. Uh, send him a message and he'll let you know. But he has lots of stuff. Bravo Zulu is doing 20% off Tenley sale pre-purchase pickups. So, like, that's cool. We like that. She said the show last weekend was terrible. I, I, and I put that... That's verbatim. I didn't make that up. Um... She did update the website, so if you want to check that out, that's very cool. And then she did some expansions to her shipping section and Dominican Red Mountain Boas. So check out Bravo Zulu Ball Pythons. Follow her, see what she's doing. Say hi to her at Tinley, please. Uh, Stone Age Ball Pythons, still waiting on the first clutch of the, the year. The tree is off of the house. I have confirmation we've done it. Mission accomplished. <laughs> the tree is off the house. Nobody has died, and he's moving forward. That's good. He was sort of uh, AWOL a little bit for a while, and I was concerned. The tree got him. The tree got the last revenge. Finished him off. Not true. He's fine. Justin's fine. Andrew, Pyros Pythons. He is still waiting on clutches for ball pythons. I know he has a leopard gecko clutch. I did try to ask him how many leopard geckos he has going, and I don't think I got an answer, and then I gave up thinking about it. But check him out for ball pythons, leopard geckos, stems and pythons, rodents, and go for cocoa all in the Pacific Northwest. Very fun. Great family snakes. The Huntsville Repticon was good. All of the stuff that didn't sell should be going on Morph Market this week or so. And the reptile room renovations are coming along well. We love that. Very fun. Chris at BNS, he'll be on the member live. I might change the time. It'll be Saturday. Member lives, if you don't know, are special secret member only lives. There's a lot more cursing, maybe some feet pics. I don't know. It gets crazy. This time, <laughs> sometimes we have guests because I'm a little bit, uh, you know, a little weird on member lives because I don't, I'm, I'm out of control, right? It's member life. So, Chris should be on to talk about the new Hamburg location and how that went. He sold eight snakes and cocoa last weekend. So it'll be exciting to see what the expanded Hamburg experience is like. He does have some pines left, one bull, and some ball pythons going on Morph Market. So check Chris at BNS Reptilia. I have finished the sponsor spots. Thank God it's over for another week. <laughs> Slow clap. Holy fuck. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Aaron, let's do some chat shout outs. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, go for it. All right, I love it. Emma, MNB, Jamie's here. What's up, Jamie? Will's here. I haven't seen Will in a while. What's up, Will? Lilac Hollow. What's up? Stan's here. Hello. Ether's here. Jake from Snake Farm is here. David. Acacia. Did I pronounce that right again? <sighs> Acacia. Right. It was, it was okay. I'm never going to get it. Was that a Cypress or Bongo clip on the wait on the thumbnail? That is a Bongo. That is mm -hmm. a uh, Bongo head clown female I produced. Okay. We'll talk about that. Jen's here. Carissa's here. Daniel's here. Thank you for being here. Well, before we started, we were talking about auctions. You want to keep go doing on that? <laughs> yeah. Well, do you think they're good, bad, or ugly? Hmm. You do those, so I guess you can't think they're bad. I don't think they're bad because because of price discovery mostly. 
So if you don't, if you put, if like Morph Market has a bunch of prices, but nothing is selling, is that the price of the animal? Right. I think. I so think should right. everybody drop the price together? Like we all like collude and we're like the new price instead of $1,500 for this combo is $1,000. And that's the new price. Well, we don't have to collude because we know it's just going to go that way. Right. Oh, or do we do an auction? It and then yeah, it's someone just figures keep out it's down. like a thousand bucks, and then everyone else drops it to a thousand to match. But yeah, you don't have to even like you don't have to clue about it. it's just going to happen, right? Right. So we it'll just happen. Um, I think they're just really good, partly just because it makes money flow through the snake economy that we have. So right. out, either it's from snake sales or it's outside money getting a good deal. And it flows in, and that means it allows someone else to buy something, and it just keeps you know snakes are moving, right? It makes everyone happy. Mm -hmm. Can I, I ask you a crazy question though? Yeah. Have you listed anything on auction on Morph Market? Yeah, I have. Okay, were they people outside of the hobby or or like level one bidders or level two, three, four, five, six? Sorry, I don't think I understand your question. You now you can see how many times your person has logged in. Oh, and they no, get a level looked. associated with them. It's like a yeah. white star is like the scariest person to inquire because they're really new. So I'm scared of I've, I've white had stars. I've a handful of people do that. Like white stars, they scare me too. I try to look up wherever I can oh and look them like, up on IG and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm trying to help them out, right? I'm like, yeah. this is how you buy a snake on the internet. And you're like, they're just like incoherent or yeah. they don't know you're a person. They think you're a bot. I have no idea who these people are. But once they get like different color levels, you're like, okay, they know how to do it. But on auctions, I don't get white star winners. I only get them on uh, sales. Do you, does that match or is it, the chat can chime in too if you think white stars even use auctions? I don't, I don't know if they do. The one, the, I only did one in February and she is a breeder, but I don't know what her star was. I didn't check. Okay. I just knew her in the community. But she was already community. like internal to the hobby. Yeah, yeah, she okay. already was. But I've had snakes sell over the last couple of years off Morph Market, like inquiries straight from Morph Market that were, you know, within 30 minute driving distance of me and they were like their second snake ever. Yes. They will use like and I've the, had a handful of those, even in the Americans. Feature. I shipped a snake to the States, Arizona, in the fall, and she was like a new buyer too. Was she like a wannabe breeder? I think, well, she plans to. She bought the female from me because she already had plans to breed it for whatever her project was, the hypoclown project she had. And I love this is why I love Americans because she just sent all the money instantaneously as soon as we agreed on, like, she I can ship it to her because she had to wait for her fall, right? Because of Arizona, the weather, mm -hmm. it's too hot. She's like, oh, here's all the money, like, months in advance. I was like, okay. <laughs> Canadians and everyone asked for, like, a lot of people asked for payment plans, and she's just like, here you go. I'm like, all right. I'm like, I need more customers like that. Right. Uh, yeah, Raider Nation, the like live YouTube auctions, I think are different because you could stumble in and be like, I'm a new breeder or I'm like a person who wants to buy or I want one pet. It's like the barrier to entry is lower than it is on Morph Market auctions. Right. A little bit. I don't know. Emma wants to know why there's a baby alligator in auction. That's a great question. That is a question that I cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> now that could just easily slip through the crack of if you report it, I'm sure they might take a look at it or something. But right. Um, yeah, it, it is weird because an auction by definition means that you must sell to that person. So unless they're I don't know, you find out they're gonna do something illegal with it. Right, like or they're not allowed to. Yeah. Right. You're you're technically required to sell it to them, uh, which kind of is a pain in the ass for some species, like an alligator. You're like, I'll let Morph Market deal with that because <laughs> I know I know they're really hard on. They ban like a ton of accounts from mm -hmm. participating in auctions because they were screwing with them in the first couple months, right? I wouldn't be surprised right. if sellers also if they're just as harsh on the sellers. Oh, why were you putting like it? And I get it. You technically, you you flip, you, you've done auctions, right? On Morph Market, mm -hmm. you just flip the, you press the button, it's very and it goes easy. through an auction, and so they easily had an alligator for sale, and I guess they said, hey, look, we can do an auction. Um, but because I thought there were rules around selling that stuff, it had to be like be very careful because of legalities of where they're allowed to be kept. 
but I could be wrong. I don't look. I don't know because like there, there's no rules for like corn snakes or hog nose, and that even though they're not an alligator, they are illegal in some states. So like, yeah, if someone buys it from Georgia, I'd have to be like, you won, but fuck you, because I'm not going to send a corn snake to Georgia. So would that be a bannable offense for that buyer? Wait, to, you like, can't sell corn snakes to Georgia. Mm-mm. No, I'll keep. Them. Is it because they're native? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not allowed to keep native snakes. Like, we don't have black rat snakes here. Like, the morse we're not allowed. Mm. Because we have a native to you, Ontario. Right. Yeah, it, it's sort of a dumb rule. There's a lot of states where, like, natives aren't legal to be kept. And in some, you can, but it's like a permit system. Yeah. yeah. And then, but who gets banned? Do we both get banned? Yeah, Emma says there's no rules about uh, Yeah, I saw on more, per more market. So All right, I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I don't follow crocodilians because I have no interest in keeping crocodilians. <sighs> I with them a few times, but no, I'm good. Do you think auctions make prices artificially fall lower? Instead of just true price discovery, they like force people to make decisions that are whatever. They can. I don't I don't think it's black and white as some people make them out to be. Because I know some people have were very upset when they before they ever did their own auction when Morph Market announced it. People were very upset about auctions. Then they mm-hmm. tried them out and sold animals that weren't selling even at shows, even without the heads missing. But now they were selling even with the heads for a little bit more, and they were very happy with what they were getting. Right, because like a male double head is of any combo is thirty is, bucks, two hundred bucks. It's like yeah. thirty to fifty bucks. Yeah. If it's a banana, it doesn't matter. It's a banana, right? Yeah. (laughs) Right. So it relieves the like slop part of the hobby. Not slop. Someone could still want it. It's a happy pet, whatever. It just figures out how to get it to go. Yeah. They go to a home. They go to somewhere else. So people, and then they got a little happier. They they got, they're still a little upset about um, the higher end stuff going in auctions because of the price fluctuations, you think. But Mm-hmm. I've said before and I'll say it again. One, I think I think if you sit on something, like if someone puts something in an auction, it generally means that nobody's asking them to buy it. Either if they've or, been advertising it at least. Right. And if or they have a bunch of it and they're right, like, right. If you have ten of something, you're gonna set like one animal doesn't set a whole market, right? Generally, right? Yes, correct. But ten could start at least changing it. Um, so, so, I don't... so what is a store of value in an animal right now? Because right now we have lots, like dozens of acid clown combos that are yeah. sitting, for example, and some of them have gone the auction and gone much cheaper. So like, should someone who has acid or confusion clowns be looking at the price of the auction ones and being like, Hmm, there's 200 of these. They're not that hard to do because you can breed any acid head clown male to any clown combo female and make all kinds of these combos. Or should they hold because I think the well, same thing is true? So so I'll try not to make it too long one day, but if you hold for too long, like everyone says they'll just hold, hold, hold. But the thing is, people are breeding the next year, right? So if you're holding 2023 acid clown, this is, is your example eventually the 2024 people are coming out and the people who had bought hats in 2022 or visuals in 2022 males, especially Mm -hmm. are probably producing them in 2024. And they're not necessarily holding your price because they kind of want to get their money back out. Right. Right. Cause they'll come in with little babies and they'll be like, Oh, there's a bunch of stuff from last year sitting at 3000. I'm going to come in at 1500 to try to sell my little babies or whatever. Right. Right. So now, now you're competing like hold the line only works if no one else is if there's not really much production going on, right? As or soon as, you are the only person yeah, with that combo. Yeah, essentially. Right? It only works when there's not a large marketplace for it. And as soon as it's out, then you've got problems. And I think like acid as a general idea is I think people are held in that line for far too long. But that's my opinion. Like yes. uh, also gene like clown, people are gonna downvote this. This is just like <laughs> People can talk. People it's say, our well. opinion. Yeah. Uh, we're not correct necessarily. Yeah, don't send me hate mail. Yeah, no hate mail. Like my my husband, he's real mean. I'm always like, 
what is the real value of, a, of an animal? And he's like, nothing. Shish kebabs, right? Because like the, the intrinsic so value and like the hobby value yeah. are two totally yeah. separate things. Right? We, we put extrinsic value onto our animals. Right. So is it is it okay if somebody breaks the line and price drops because everybody's been sitting at the same price? Is that like an ethical decision? Or do they, do they deserve people to slip into their DMs and give them a hard time? I mean, depends what we're talking about here, really. Like, as in, sure, know. it's a hard, it's a hard, like, it's generally, again, not black and white. I try not to live in a black and white world when we talk about this stuff because it's nuanced to everyone's situation and nuance on what that situation is. Mm -hmm. And the intrinsic, like, you talk about intrinsic versus extrinsic value. And it's like, should, why should anyone get hate mail for what they value this animal at extrinsically or whatever, right? And that's a great point based on it's worth what someone's willing to pay. If no one's paying it and you're sitting on it and sitting on it, well, either you think the value, like you can keep your prices there. It's your project. Just don't be upset or complain that you're not selling them three, like two weeks later. All right. Can That's I tell fine. you something? Dave has said a couple times now. Dave loves it. He's like, you know, how people are like, well, if it gets bigger and you keep holding it, you should hold it back and breed it yourself. But he's like, if no one wanted to buy it, when it was a baby, a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and you're breeding a bunch of it, are you just shooting yourself in the foot by making even more of it the next year? Or should you cut your losses sooner because it's gone out of fashion before well, you even do it? Yes and no, right? Because it depends on is – if we're talking about combos, it that would come down to you have to break down the individual mutations on it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, hi, Lindsay. And, Lindsay's here. Yeah, I saw that. Respect. <laughs> and I would say something along the lines of like, you can go back to a lot of genes like hidden gene Woma, right? Mm -hmm. People try to bring that back, but there's no value to hidden gene Woma. In COVID, we're, we're going to excuse COVID years where every gene had random, ridiculous value that everyone wants something a little different. Mm -hmm. It's back to the regular world of what, what you're doing, right? So... If you're talking about hidden gene one with clowns, yeah, maybe if you keep bringing down that road, no one's going to really like it. But if you like it, you can keep working it. I just think you have to have your expectation set that this is not a crazy project. So unless you make a really awesome animal with it that nobody's seen before, the hidden gene one with clown project is probably going to be relatively limited in what you're going to make, right? On what else stuff you put into it. Right. So I, so, so I guess what I'm asking is like, you know, if you had a bunch of hidden Gwoma clown females and you wanted a thousand dollars from them or whatever, because you're yeah. like, it's a female clown, it's got two other genes in it. One, some of them have yellow belly, some of them have, and she, yeah, I don't know, like whatever, whatever, problem. something yeah. common. You're like, it's worth it, but then nobody wants to buy it. If you were to keep it and keep going, you would be like increasing the like percentage of hidden gene woman in your own collection by holding back all of those girls when right. nobody wanted them for like a fairly reasonable. But you'd have to just be okay with like if that right. you just have to set your expectations. I think at that point that you have to be okay with the fact that these are pretty much just your hobby and your pets, mm -hmm. and that you're either selling to pet store people for a hundred bucks as just cool clowns, or you're hoping it catches fire, lightning in a bottle in a few years or something, and you make like inferno clowns. Maybe they become really cool. Mm -hmm. And then people want your stuff. Um, but right. you said, I, I think the mentality of the breeder in that case has to make sure you set that correctly, right? If your mentality is that because I put hidden gene woman in a clown or with other stuff, then it's going to be worth astronomical and everyone's going to buy it. Then you just send yourself up for disappointment, in my opinion. <laughs> you mean, if you're like, I'm going to focus on genetic stripe and never have clown genetic stripes, I think you're setting yourself up for not a good time. Right. You have to couch your own personal interest in what the market wants. To. You have to figure out what you what your expectations are as a breeder. If you're just playing around with pets and hobbies and stuff like that, it's cool. If you want money, you might have to follow a bit more of a trend. Um, you have to, you know, but you have to do the legwork. If you want to show off hidden gene woman or anything else, you just have to find where it works. That's mm -hmm. kind of it. But no. Back to your original question about auctions, though, I would say you're talking about pricing and stuff like that. I would say if someone wants to use that as an example, more information is better, right? The best decision anyone can make is an informed one. Mm -hmm. So if you take acid clown back to the original conversation, 
if you see a bunch of them in auction and you still see people post it and you look at the first time it was posted like six months ago and the prices are still three thousand dollars then maybe you've got to take like something in between the auction and the posted price right like you have to use the information available to you and you have to take it bit of it with a grain of salt because we both know people put sucker prices out right mm -hmm. or <laughs> sometimes it's not a sucker price but it's a price but that sometimes make... it fucking is a sucker price it so. is but sometimes it's make me sell it because i don't really want to i i want it kind right. of the whole back but you have to kind sure. of figure out is it um and then you kind of have to do it right do you think people are doing that though do you think people are looking at doing it and going like okay i have a bunch of five thousand dollar x combos the auction price is one thousand dollars people do want it but not at this price these aren't het for anything else they're not double visuals they're just blank plus two incomplete dominant gene is it time to let this one go are people actually doing that because it doesn't really look like that's happening they're still holding. I don't know if they're doing yeah. that. I don't think they are. I agree with you. I don't really see it. I think, I think the thing is, it's really hard to raise a price, but you can just slowly drop it closer to that price point. Right. It's like the like you don't have to sell boiling it frog thing. Like just because an auction went for a thousand dollars, it doesn't mean you have to immediately sell your stuff the next day for a thousand dollars. You could move it from five to four and test and, each price point. Yeah. Why not? Like, mm -hmm. you're going to sit on it anyway. Why not test it? And I know people say, like, well, that's like, some people say I left a thousand dollars on the table then. Let's assume, right? And I'm like, but you never had the money in the hand, right? It was just a value assigned to the snake that you want cash for it. It doesn't, you didn't, you didn't lose that's anything true. because you never had it in the first place. Right. People fall into that fallacy every minute of the day we're like yeah, my think, snakes are worth this snakes. much <laughs> <laughs> that happens also all the time outside of snakes too it's not just yeah it's not just limited to us because you don't know how much a snake is worth until someone yeah. pays for it because that's when you've defined it in the market outside right. of that it's just all sort of magic and i get i assess it to be this value because it could die tomorrow and then you didn't get any money for it because it i don't that's know true. had a, a a bowel movement that was weird. People yeah. did want a uh, stranger for years. Stranger was always popular. Uh, Desert Ghost, nobody wanted, but that was market problems, I think, with the name, right? Mm -hmm. You had two, you had the Desert Gene that literally had, you know, the females died. Mm -hmm. There was a whole science thing in there. And then you had the ghost name, which everyone was down on hypos and orange ghosts, right? Nobody mm. want that stuff at the time. And then you, somebody combined the names and was just like, yeah, let's just do this. <laughs> and I was like, this is the right. dumbest they name ever. Sahara or something stupid. Sahara. That, that been was cool. at least not confusing for people. Right. I can't believe that line, that name died. The, the other thing is, like, people remember Justin's uh, victories. They don't remember his failures. There's, like, a recollection bias. Like, he's picked lots of little genes and been like, this one's going to be great, and this is going to be awesome. Like his and like, computer dreamsicle that he made, and then he was like, I'm never doing this project again. <laughs> right. So he's tried many things. and Yeah, he, he uh, does trial. You have to trial and error. That is true. Right. And he's so, missed on things many times, he says. Right. So people are always like, Justin thrives off genes people threw away. I think it's more than that. Justin thrives off a, a deep and wide collection that he can throw many things at to see what sticks i think he also hit on some really good stuff early on like he talked about just recently he had the video about like the top five snakes or something and mm -hmm. he talked about how in like 2013 he was doing leopard clowns and then ben rennick did spot nose clowns mm -hmm. and then that's when justin saw the spot nose clown and he was inspired to combine them and that's how the mm -hmm. batman was born um but it wasn't like spot nose was thrown away necessarily ben rennick had done all the legwork to figure out that it looks really cool and clown Mm -hmm. um, okay do you think if someone else had made it batman and maybe even called it batman first it would have been as popular probably not most okay. people don't know how to market a new gene because the kiki ball where the, the clown genetic stripe has been out for years right mm -hmm. and nobody gave two shits about it now maybe it was ahead of his time before people really cared about double recessives as much mm -hmm. but nobody gave two shits about that right it's why it's called the kiki ball he named it after his kid. I believe he promised his kid if he made a combo, he named it after his kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's still in. 
You just think he should have done more social media? I don't I don't know the answer to it. I don't know the answer to the marketing of it. Maybe I I do think you need to get the animal out. You don't have to hold on to everything. You could have sold that to someone or traded it for like fifty thousand dollars worth of project animals and let someone else do the marketing for you. Like Justin, like trade it to someone higher up the food chain. Let them do all the marketing mm. for or just let them in the project early. Or he doesn't tell anybody. He breeds then, 50 of them. <laughs> well, then we're back to the spider gene. And then he has, you know, and then he an releases the, the double heads once he already has yeah. grown on whatever's like people do for new genes. Well, that's, yeah, that's been going you know on for I mean? many years. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what chat's doing. Beast Wars, uh, if you're in the growing stage, sometimes it's worth to hold back females rather than cut price, then you'll have more to breed. So here's a question yes. based on that. Do you believe that just because you're in the growing phase that you should hold back females, even if it's not all the, it's not the animals you want it? Like if you want it, if you're aiming for, like if you, I don't know, it doesn't matter. If you bred double head to double head and you're like, I really want DG clowns and they're double head to double head and you miss on it. Do you think you have to hold back like a DG pause head clown female just because it was the only thing that hatched in the clutch? Or would you believe selling it all? And just buying a DG clown would be better. I think so. So because I have animal a collection of animals already, I think selling it and holding it back would be better. Or so selling it and like getting one better one is better because like it takes too long to grow up a female. It's three to a million years hypothetically. Right. Maybe for I, some I think people, it's very, like two years. I think it's very dependent on what you're doing. But I don't think if you're growing your business, you have to hold it back. I think you can just sell it and get maybe one better, one really good animal, or even just a couple animals that are kind of more in line with your project than just keeping back what you think might be really good. My my biggest problem. But I think there's, the, I don't think one way or the other, right? It's not, there's right. no wrong answer, really. No, yeah. My problem was like during the, the panda times, I couldn't buy anything. Like I needed to be not have diseases <laughs> so i needed a guarantee for that and then stuff would be bought up before then so i did buy stuff but many things i wanted to buy i was turned down by sellers like i'm never fucking selling to you which i remember all of your names by the way i have them written down what and pepper's farm never forgets are they ever. in are they in chat <laughs> that'd be funny uh i don't know maybe but they, what why wouldn't they sell to you because <laughs> you were they didn't want it? me to see if it was gonna have nido what that's kind of sketchy. Does that not make it more sketchy? Yeah. Because I would be like, sure. And some I'd be of like, them, go and ahead. Listen to me. And some of them probably don't have Nido. They just don't even want to entertain the idea of somebody even thinking about it. And I think it's gotten Jeez. better since then. But at that time, like, I tried to buy all kinds of stuff. And people would be like, no. <laughs> like, your money's no good here. And the ironic part is, is that you're still around willing to buy stuff now. And the person they might have sold it to is long gone. Or getting out. They right. And I have a more. podcast so I can tell people. That's also true, right? So <laughs> I heard, actually, I had a friend message me that he's been seeing every day someone getting out of the business. Someone sent off their collection. In he sent Canada me a picture, or in the U.S.? In the U.S. Okay. My buddy's in the U.S. He actually sent me a picture. He's like, the collection bought today. And he showed me a picture of somebody's post uh, of like a trailer of racks that they they bought, right? And stuff like that. And I guess collection. Mm -hmm. He was saying there's a, apparently a lot of breeders in Georgia, I think Kentucky, Tennessee, in those areas. There's a lot of saturation mm -hmm. of like, he gave me statistics, randomly, we were just talking about last night, he gave me statistics like there's 190,000 people in the city and there's like 100 breeders or something. It's like, that's a lot. That's a lot of market saturation. We need more populations in Canada. More Thanks, people. Aaron. You guys can all move to Canada. Yeah. And become so breeders. It's very weird because... The, the South, right? The South. They have like a longer history of keeping snakes in general, like historically. Because like the old importers would come in through Miami or New York. Yeah. So like the Northeast and the South are like your, you know, central hubs of like keeping. I think it was so just like, to, yeah, yeah. So the, and the reason. concentration of breeders around there, even though it's not like a continuous line of people, like 
they're always there. There's more shows. There's more history of shows. So like they teach each other. So the density is just like through the roof of breeders in the South. <sighs> a lot. It is a lot. Let's talk about the density of breeders in Canada. How many? There, there's 38 million Canadians and 330 million people in the U.S. So, yeah. like, do you think you have a tenth the breeders, or do you think you have like a different? I think we have less. Even less. Well, and I can only premise that on morph market numbers, right? Okay. And I only I say that because like if we do by like the 10 percent thing, like oh, there should be like 10 percent. We have 10 percent of the population of. The right, US, you would think. Should we have 10% of the animals? If you just look at the numbers of how many morph market animals are ball pythons are in Canada versus the US, it's not 10%. We are like 2% maybe of what the Americans have. Out. But do you think Canadians are not putting it on morph market? Because that is a morph market is only to sell I, to a dumb American. I know Americans? lots of Canadians who say, I don't sell anything on morph market, so I'm never using it. I didn't sell anything in the one month I tried it, so I'm not going to use it. Mm -hmm. And I just think they're short sighted. I think we need to be using it more because there's no, I think part of Canada's problem is we're not, we haven't really quite centralized as much as we should and more market would work. Cause there's like, um, the West, like Alberta and stuff like that. They kind of stick to themselves. Like they have their own shows and everything. But also the problem is like in the States, you guys travel ridiculous distances to go to shows. We're real world dumb. You guys will like go like twelve. I've seen people drive like ten hours to go to a I've show. I've seen them drive eighteen hours. Yeah, so here, bro. one first of all, eighteen hours ain't gonna get you like out of fucking Ontario. But dang it, but like people don't. It's really costly to travel here, like to fly in because you have to fly most of the time. Other than like people come from like six hours away, like Quebec, they'll come in from Montreal to come to Ontario shows. Um, but the yeah, West that would doesn't be really reasonable to have like six an hours, Ontario I think like hub show. We do. We call it the CRB, right? Yeah. Do you have a we, British Columbia hub show? No. There's like no breeders in British Columbia. What? It Don feels Patterson. like the West Coast is like hypothetically rich, right? Yeah. Don Patterson's out there. Um, Henry Puron was out there, but he unfortunately had a facility fire like last year um, mm -hmm. and lost everything. That sucks. Yeah. All right. That's really sad. Um, but thankfully, nobody was injured or anything like that. He just lost his business. and that Not just lost his business, but thankfully, him and his family, because it was in his house, I guess. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, him and his family were okay. Um, I think he was, like, I think he, I don't know if he decided to get back in or not. Uh, who else is out there? There's a guy named Jeff Favell many years ago. He did it for a living early on. He's no longer around. Uh, Isaac at Superscale Exotics. He's bought up a bunch of stuff in the last few years. He's got a big collection out in bc but it's hard other species are doing better than ball pythons in certain areas like over competing them or do you think it's just like the all of canada is just kind of mid <laughs> you know what i mean or what what is it what canada's meat and potatoes right so all the main species well i shouldn't say main species because there's like no corn snake breeders anymore there's, <laughs> there probably are i just don't know of any i honestly don't know of any I know like, one girl. She comes to the show. She purely does scaleless, which I know are your favorites. Fuck, bitch. She purely does scaleless. Dream Jean Morris. She she's really nice. I I'm like. Sure, she's a great she's person. Great. Yeah, Tristan terrible just taste. Is in, uh, Canadians love dart frogs. Apparently, by the way, Canada is like the leading hobby area for dart frogs. That's what I learned this past week. Okay, we I have mean that's cool. Amounts of dart frog breeders. I mean, people don't have to just keep one species, but a lot of times if they're going to be a ball python person, they are not also an everything else person. If they're going to be an everything else that person, they have one ball python or something as a pet, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Crescent geckos and leopard geckos are big here, but they're part of the meat and potatoes, I'd say. Our problem in Canada is to do with a lot of climate. We talked about the South, right? Having a lot mm -hmm. of breeders. I think that has a lot to do with outdoor caging. And just climate. But people really only do that in like southern Texas and, and Florida. Well, BPI did it early on with their giants, right? When they used to breed those things. They had in like Cali? outdoor enclosures. Was the BPI Barkers. in Cali? Am I making shit up? No, they were in Texas too? They were in Texas, yeah. The Parkers. Drunk. They might have moved to there from somewhere. But yeah, they were in, I believe they were in Texas. Or still are, actually. Mm. Um, but, but that doesn't explain why it's so 
dense in like New York or whatever. I think it's old import hubs. So people would crack hubs. No, no, no. I just think that's part of it down there, right? Yeah, and take them to like White Plains in the the late 90s, early, like mid 90s. And that was like, that's why like bows are still popular in New York, in that like metro area, in a way that they aren't popular as intensely anywhere else. Boas, you said? Yeah, like red tail boas. Yeah. Whenever someone's like talking about their boss and baked beans and their boas, I'm like, mm, <laughs> I know what happened there. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's because like the Colombian imports would come to Miami or New York, and so yeah, they would yeah. just the two big hubs, right? Yeah, and that's how they scatter across the eastern seaboard. And nobody really wants to be a berm breeder anymore, so like Thankfully. those all died, and so Thankfully. all that's well, left is boas. They, so. You probably know you you're up on like all the testing and stuff. Didn't they back in the day it was like green Burmese pythons were prone to at the time it was called just a respiratory infection, right? Yeah, berm disease. Berm disease. Green it was green specifically the green ones got it, right? Majority of the time. And then it would just be a respiratory disease that the snake would never get rid of. Every winter mm-hmm. they would get sick. Everyone would talk about it. And I think Brian Barczyk said in one of his videos that they figured out it was some disease or virus or something. And it either they were able to cure it or those animals just were not bred and they just died off eventually. I think they all died. <laughs> I want to I wanna be – just believe that it was curable, but I do believe they all just eventually died out. Right. And like So, like, so some of them could have been mycoplasma, which was, like – I became, think that would have been the worst. Became popular as a concept and is curable. But, like – I can see a lot of people. Just we didn't even them. know Nido existed at that time. Yeah, yeah. So it could have been both, or like just Animals curling up more than one a others. twenty foot snake in a eight foot cage with its own urine stank. That people uh, still do. That's but, also yeah. not good for that people. Uh, still do. Yeah. Let's, so both of those are bad. Talk about the giants. I yeah. don't. Say, I don't have a lot of nice things to say about giant keepers. All right, let's not talk about mean things. We're trying to be happy. Uh, well, we can be positive that we. I, I like berms, so I wish there were more berms. They the are world. my favorite snake. That way, I yeah. would love to. I keep telling. There's a breeder on the west coast. He's got a lot of berms, Dylan. I'm like, bro, you gotta make some like super. Make some like dwarf Burmese albino labyrinth, and I'll buy them. <laughs> I was like, I saw the. As long pure, as they don't get over ten feet, we're good. Pure dwarves at the. The Herp show, they were right next to me. They were fucking fire. Were they? <laughs> I, I, I've heard I they, want, they just I heard, look cool. Well, do they? You know? I heard they're also really spicy. I don't care. They're, I know they're the only like were. whatever, 10 feet long, 8 feet long as an yeah. adult. So that's like a big boa. I can so handle legally, that. we can keep them here. So I'm like, put labyrinth in them. Albino labyrinth. I'll buy them. They're so rare, pure. You'd have to do it with like a male and like breed down yeah, that way. Yeah, you'd have to. It, it, it's a dream in like 10 years. Someone else. I can't. It'll happen. Someone It'll else. happen. Yeah. They did with retics. They'll do it with berms. Mm-hmm. Gotta get them away from the mite farmers. <sighs> That's all. That's who really imported the dwarfs, right? So. All right, back to auctions. Ready? Yeah. Some people think you shouldn't auction an animal if you had just sold a similar animal for. Full retail because it makes a full retail person mad. I can agree because they that. got suckered. Are you not? Are, do we not talk about like protecting, like being nice? Like I can agree with that. How much time between an auction and a retail sale should happen before you're like the market's moved on? Good question. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know either. It okay. We we should specifically specify like the price point here. If you sold a three hundred dollars snake for like you sold a bell for retail and then you put a bell up for auction i don't think that's a problem mm-hmm. like because it's very likely going to go close enough to 300 bucks that's and right if your customer who's spent 300 bucks or even if it doesn't who cares because you can buy them for right. 100 dollars on that's correct sometimes. and i can say if, if the person comes back and says hey i saw you put up an auction it went for 200 bucks and i spent three you could be nice and give the hundred dollars back if you really want yeah you could be nice like I know people that won't be, but I'm like, why not be nice? But if it's like ten thousand dollar retail sale, and then it drops lower, mm-hmm. I I don't. And you're like, oh look, let's put this in auction, and it goes for like four grand. I'd be kind of pissed if I was a ten thousand dollar buyer. Yeah, I mean, this is like Daddy Justin's primary concern with Daddy auctions. Justin. <laughs> yeah, he's Daddy. Is that is that his primary concern? Yeah, it's I because it's hard problem. to be fair to someone. In a in a in an actively falling market, 
with auctions thrown in as a wild card because like you might think 5,000 is fair. You might negotiate 4,000, but it goes on auction and goes for 2,000 and you just sold almost the exact same thing two weeks ago for four and now it's going for two. Are you an asshole for like putting I mean, them in that position? Off, I don't think it's that bad, but I do think you would, you can't do it the next day because it means that you were willing to take a lower price. Exactly. You revealed your hand. You reve yeah, you revealed your hand. So, like, oh, you probably at least need to be at least a month. All right. Beast Morph says he's not as worried about that, but he is worried about price falls during payment. Yeah. Plans. So, over 90 days, seeing you sold it for a thousand bucks, then it becomes a like technically probably a five or six hundred dollar thing. However, if you're doing like you're being nice enough to give the person a payment plan. 90 days prior you could have sold it faster maybe mm -hmm. and i don't think that person really has a, too much of a leg to stand on because they're getting a really big benefit for a payment plan if it's a 30-day drop right that's free food price. for like 90 days yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking like a longer term if it was a 30-day payment plan you could just be nice and like you just know, be like you pay negotiate but... yeah you, you paid up buddy you're done or whatever it depends on how far it drops really i guess if Beast Morphs is, like, stuff... that's a good point, but it depends on how far it drops. Yeah. I like giving credit. I don't like giving money away. <laughs> giving money back. I'll just give you credit. Yeah, credit's fun. Or add in a bonus snake. Mm -hmm. We love that. That's two for one deal. Just whatever they want. Uh, Daddy Justin is crazy. Is that he? is a crazy name. <laughs> I think it's funny. But I can understand, but he's coming from a spot where like a lot of his animals are really quite uncommon quite rare like mm -hmm. what are we talking about there's a million and one dreamsicles like if i i can search right now for a morph market for like dreamsicles how many how many dreamsicle are in u.s and in north america right now for sale i can do it uh a lot and they have been going extraordinarily cheap on auctions because there's just a lot of them and they're well, that's my point are you going to be upset that someone spent whatever uh, I don't know. How many dream schools? You have no other genes or just just dream schools? So it has what? to just be dream schools. No other genes. Uh, right now there's forty three. Forty three. In the U.S. and Canada and Puerto Rico, which is the U.S. I feels like there's there should be more out there. I feel like there's more out there. <laughs> well, I took out. So if you add other traits, there's 135. Because a lot of the other traits are like... But if you put dreams, it should add those in there, right? As well, in... I, I took them out. So 135 with Oh, well, I meant dreams, it with like every... I thought you meant like specifically with like yellow belly. I meant dreams, it with anything in it. Okay, 135. Yeah, 135. And that's... there's 43 just plain ass dream sickles. Yeah, so that means like the price of plain ass dream sickles has to come down. That's a lot. Right. That's a lot. And there's one in auction like every week, and they're females. Right, but and females are good to buy to be future breeders. Agree. If you buy a double visual, you can always breed her to whatever to make double heads or. But my point is, is that if females are in auction, it means that they're not selling at retail. Like nobody's, there's no, there's not a high demand for them. There's a demand. The price point probably just isn't two thousand dollars like people think. I think a plain dream school female thousand dollars to fifteen hundred would probably be reasonable in today's market. I mean, there's some already on there for 700 females, 750, 750. Yeah, I'm pretty confident males in 2023 were under the table going for like 500 bucks or less. I'm pretty, I already know that they went for 300 at <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> shows that I went to. I, I do think Dreamsicles will have a new life at that price range of like 500 bucks because on a table. It's like a pet person thing. That's going to look point. really cool. And, yeah. the, and pet people spot five hundred dollar bells for a decade. They're gonna buy, even buy them for now for five hundred bucks. Four. It doesn't matter. You're still making snakes that are five hundred dollars. So you think a couple of months would be like a good time to like rethink about a price? Change. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. New question. Do you know how like a price kind of gets set in the fall, like a new floor, and then it doesn't really fall too much over the spring because there's like tax money, so it sort of sits yeah when do they reprice again when like the new babies hit the market in the beginning of the summer because like 
if, if they should if all come down again like if we're talking let's say we're talking like dream schools right because you have to we have to use like it's nuanced but the funny thing is like we talk about it, snakes are art but they're also i come from the financial world so like i can see the similarities to stocks and it says like you have to talk about each individual more for combination on its own almost because you can't always compare them right they're not fungible yeah, so like what you're talking about is like dream schools, for example. If the price stayed at thousand dollars for a female all the way to now, like when did the new when when should the price drop kind of thing? In the spring. The spring when, after when, when there's a bunch more out there, like probably early summer. Hmm. So prices so like there's like seasonality, obviously. Yeah. So like when there are the most snakes on the market, which is the, the late fall, summer right? fall yeah. like peak ball python market which this year it peaked in like october 4th or something like that i don't yeah. know what it was because that's when they're most ready the prices drop the fastest because people are like i'm full i'm full there's distressed sellers yeah. right but then they sort of stabilize in the spring and then like there's like the summer doldrums they see some people will run sales in the summer because people yeah, are I don't know, on vacation or something market. but when did the Last year's inventory of the same morph drop because new ones came in cheaper. Wow. And, and it's not a female, so it's not necessarily getting more expensive. Or should you have already tried to sell it in the spring during tax season and not even had it in the summer? I think that's probably the best thing. I know Will Banks, and I know nobody likes that name, but I know his that I know his idea is that as soon as the first clutch is like laid, he runs a he runs a sale on his site. He'll post it on his socials. He's like, Oh, the first eggs drop. Oh. So when he's the, like, time for me to sell out all my previous inventory, he puts that blows out. A but sale. he could hypothetically be, be laying right now. Yeah, whatever it is. You know, twenty twenty four stuff is yeah laying or could even have been hatched by now. It's, it's either like, late or hatched. It's whatever he did last. That's what he did last year. And I would say something similar. Like I, I agree with you. I think push it out the sooner the better, because when you have when there's twenty twenty four babies out, and you're sitting on twenty twenty three babies. On work market people start questioning the size of your animals oh my god <laughs> okay listen that part drives me nuts because they're fine right they're fine but, but they want 700 them... gram three month old baby right but they're they're <laughs> fine like, that's not, that's like i got them on frozen thawed for you they're nice they're just not huge because i don't want a 700 gram three month old to take to shows it's so big at that point it's like right the, the show, nobody the else wants people it. don't want it Right. The, the pet store, my wholesalers, all they're like, Aaron, put like a meal in them and then I'll take them. Right. And that's it. They want them as soon as they can. Because the smaller and, they are, the easier they sell the pet people. Yeah. And, and to be fair, they're going to feed them. They're not just going to put them on their floor. They feed them, make sure they're okay. But they want them smaller because they want that range to sell them, right? They don't want them at 200 grams because they only have like another 100 grams to sell them, right? So you think we should be dropping prices hypothetically? To clear but both genders' inventory by spring, by the end of spring tax season, is that me crazy? personally? I don't like to have inventory sitting around for like six, eight months. I don't have a crazy collection though. Crazy, I don't have a hundred babies, so like it's easier for me to push out a dozen babies or three dozen babies, right, over time. Mm -hmm. But I just, I honestly, even though you and I agree. A baby that's you know 500 grams and six months old isn't a problem or even eight months old or whatever there's lots of people who start questioning that right because they're buying the 2023s because they're like oh it's one more year closer to breeding or eight months closer to breeding right because they breed females at right. 18 months and I, I do want to know a male specifically that it's sort of getting close to 500 by the time it's a year or two old I agree. it doesn't have to be because i can get it up like put the extra 300 grams on it fast if i want to like, i roughly want it to be about i i look at like yearlings between about 600 grams is my average is what i like if i was buying one and it was in that range of let's say 450 to like 700 i would definitely consider that a healthy animal i would consider it healthy even if it was like 300 it would still be healthy fine. But, i can fit i can yeah. get size on it in three months while it's quarantining you know yeah i'm just not that worried about it anymore because i'm an adult <laughs> Like every time I fed females really fast when they're little, not even fast, still once a week, but like a really uh, perfectly optimized size, most of them still don't breed until they're three anyway. So what's the point? 
I just don't even care. I'll well, feed them whatever. I, I was trying to sell a snake. Frozen thawed mice. I'll skip I was, weeks. I don't care. They'll breed at three. It's I fine. was trying to sell a snake to someone on like our version of Craigslist up here. And it was like a red striped heck clown female. And the person's like, how big is it? I'm like, it's like, it says in the ad, like 450 grams or something. And they're like, oh, I thought it was breeder size. And I'm like, nope. But I'm like, you know, feed it for a couple more years. It'll be breeder size. And like, I'm like, I have a proven breeder heck clown female. You can like just a normal. I'm like, she's available too. The person just crickets, never heard anything back. And I'm like, man, people are still rushing to breed them like instantaneously. I'm like, even if you got it today, there's no guarantee it's going to breed this year for you. Right. Even if it was an already proven you, breeder adult. Yeah. She I, might just be like, I hate your room. I know people also that you. refuse to move the like the snake from one level in the rack to another because they're afraid it's going to throw them off. I'm not worried about that, but it will I'm mess them up to move rooms in your house. Yes. They're like, your, this room is different, ew. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, All right, Jake asks, th and this is true for some things, that there's a price premium for females as they get bigger. Um, I would hope that there would be more of a premium, but that doesn't always occur. Right. It's, when I look at the data, it still happens sometimes, but it doesn't happen a lot. It doesn't like, happen a lot, no. It should. I agree. Uh, but it doesn't. It... it in theory, it should be a thing. It used to be back when you sold normals for ten cents a gram. It was during the the panda <laughs> times. Like you could sell. Uh, oh, four hundred grams got you a premium rate. Yeah, like it, so you can see what year, what what month a, a snake was born and what month it sold on work market. So when you go through, you can tell like it was listed as like a nine hundred gram clown female normal, right. but like. 10 months old she sold at 10 months old she was 900 grams at that point she sold for 800 dollars. she was closer to breeding than like if she had sold as a hatchling the year before she might have been during the panda times 300 bucks or something 400 bucks but yeah some some more falls are faster than like any sort of price premium for the morph so Depends on how rare it is to be on with. Depends if it's a real rarity or a fake rarity. Because we know those have happened in the hobby before. The fake rarity. That... How many of them are happening right now? I don't know. I can't. That, that's. <laughs> I'm sure there's at least one. <laughs> but if you if you you can you eventually see the the people talk about this stuff like years after, right? And people talk about the Batman drop. When did Justin first produce a Batman? He talked about leopard clowns and spot nose clowns in like 2013 like 11 years ago so i'm sure he talked to ben to get a spot nose as soon as he can i'm sure he when did his first video come out though 16 17 i think he came out in, i want to say 17 is when it was first released but, but he how talked many, about it on 16 but did he no but did he already have one in 16 15 or 16 is my point all right i googled it and what does World of All Python tell you? <laughs> I didn't check that. I checked the, the internet. Oh, there's an ad. So 2015 was the Batman. Right, right. So released. we've been dealing with it for nine years now. And I'm like, they might have sold for what, five to probably 10 grand back in 2015, maybe? Yeah, I thought they were seven or 8,000. Probably. Am I making that up? No, I don't know. I don't. I was around, but I don't know what the Batmans are selling for. But that would make sense. Not ten. So they actually had a fucking good run, if you think about it. Well, this that's kind of important. Like, clown you had combo. a really good run. If you bought it at two grand, and all of a sudden they're like seven hundred bucks, I'm like, but you you miss the whole other part that everyone else was dealing with them. There's a bajillion of them, right? That and the ingredients are super cheap. Right. I had a and great run for a combo. Time. There are other two gene clown combos that did not have that run did not start that high did not no. go that long and no one but cares about now good so. good and it was like two relatively genes that people really didn't have like high on their right priority to buy right it was very cool i see that comment um i agree and disagree because one snake isn't going to really make a whole price drop and it doesn't have to be a price drop it could just be put it in an auction and the auctions don't really, in my opinion, don't really affect retail for one or two snakes. Do you think they should be wholesaled instead of price drop? That's my next question. If Let's they're wholesale like, animals, yeah. I, I wholesale, I, but I'm a big fan of wholesale, right? If it's like 
single G almost even doubles. I rarely sell anything that's like doubles, like passed on Mojave's, all that stuff. All this stuff goes to I don't care if it's double head or not, it all goes to all goes to wholesalers. There's lots of people, not lots of people, but some people I know have told me that there are people who breed who wholesale everything that's a thousand and under. Yeah. <laughs> they, I wholesale like they just retail yeah. the high end stuff only yeah. because it's not worth anybody's time. <laughs> which I sort of agree. Or they give it to their buddy and the buddy sells it on their table or whatever. Yeah. Right. It, it shows because they don't want to be a show hound or whatever, which is cool. It's fine. But is that good advice for people? Because then people don't necessarily get their name out there to find customers. Because you are you yeah. just the guy who always has a thousand dollar stuff on more market and no one never get reviews. It de- it depends, right? <laughs> Where are they finding these wholesalers? <laughs> That's always right. the question, right? <laughs> there are a secret. Some people just pound the pavement and go knock on every pet store they can and try to sell to every pet store. I know people that do that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how I start my relationship. Some of mine are through that way. And that's always that's fun. still good advice. It just doesn't guarantee you're going to get a relationship. But oh, agree. I just mean that's one option. I didn't say that's one option. I yeah. honestly, the best, to be fair, that was the best of, I have cold called wholesalers, like just pure whole, big wholesalers here in Canada that had like the, the our pet smart like contracts over that. Mm-hmm. They took stakes for me years ago. We don't, we don't do business anymore. That guy became a bit of a dick bag, so we don't talk to him anymore. Yeah, no dick bags. But it was stuff like that. That's how my like that's how some of it happened for me. But I don't have mass production, so, so those wholesalers like I they're hit or miss for me, right? Well, what production do you have? Like, I don't know. I have about you know I think last year I had a low count of like four clutches, but I averaged like four eight clutches. To 10, eight to twelve, yeah. I don't have a crate. I have like forty animals. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty pretty reasonable. What the fuck? <laughs> I would love that. That'd be awesome. I got I'm looking down the barrel of at least 25, 30 clutches this year. Yeah, my goal is to get idiot. there. Just I actually reduced my collection in like 2019, 2020, because it just wasn't where I want to be. And then I just been built it back up. And it'll go, I gotta expand and move into a different room now and go higher. I'm see, I'm big positive about it. I think there's just more to go. Mm-hmm. And I don't, we talk about pricing, but I don't really worry about it because I run my, my collection runs in the black every year, right? It pays for itself. Mine doesn't. <laughs> now that might be because <laughs> of size variance, but I, there's like, yeah. So mine just runs like in the black. I did my, I gotta do my taxes, but I think that's, if we're talking about pricing, I think that's a big thing. More legit businesses would probably help out. You can write a lot of stuff off, right? Right, but that's why it's running in the red because you write everything off. Well, no, it I, runs in the black technically. The well, you know what I mean. Runs in the red. I'm still not making money. Uh, Aaron says Justin Babu and bigger names can still sell animals around. Babu is a show guy, though. That guy hustles, bro. I full respect Babu. He he just hustles every weekend. He's at shows. <sighs> the hard part is like. Um, I I sell lots of cheap snakes. Fuck, I breed corn snakes. You know, whatever. I not that's not what I'm worried about. It's just, are you going to be the person who will do enough shows to sell enough cheap snakes? You have to sort of decide that. And then if you are that, then you don't necessarily need to pursue a ton of wholesale. That's right. It, I find a lot of people do one or the other. Right. Mm-hmm. In in Canada, there's only like seven shows really about that in Ontario in the area and Alberta only has a few. So like you can't just be a show person. You can. I know I know a guy who breeds a fair amount and he never exports. He purely sells in Canada. But then he can't like he doesn't make five thousand dollars snakes usually doesn't sell them. Okay, let's talk about that. How like Canadians, ball python breeders, appear to have the dream of mostly being exporters of high-end snakes. Is that correct? I don't. I don't know if it's a dream. It happens to be a bit more of a reality. High-end stuff usually exports because in, it's all. All the Canadian breeders I know price like price everything in the U.S. We all price everything in U.S. dollars. Do you it price a, it in Canadian shekels for each other? 
I you know what I mean? I know lots okay. of them that do. I do buy things like even though, but that's like a 25% discount already, right? Right. It's like an exchange rate of 25%, um, roughly. And then Canadian, the reason breeders get upset, some bigger breeders get upset is because the Canadian's also going to ask for a further discount on it. So if it's a $10,000 snake, US, it would mm -hmm. normally be, like if we bought it from Justin, it would be 12500 right? Mm -hmm. And so they're already asking for the $10,000 in Canadian. And then they're like, hey, will you take seven for it? So it's like a $5,000 discount, essentially. Don't you think people do that in the US, though? Like, well, offer the Canadian low ball offers? The, the, the that, Canadians are cheaper on average. It rotates. It goes in cycles. Sometimes Canadians are really cheap, and then sometimes Americans are really cheap. I think we're like the Canadians. White Trash Riviera. It kind of just rotates depending <laughs> on where the hobby cycle is for the country. But the the Canadian says, "Well, I can just sell it if I want to drop the price. I'll sell it for seven thousand dollars U.S. and still make the ten grand Canadian mm -hmm. or close to it. Because if it's a high demand animal, then they'll just sell it, right?" Do you think – okay, so I, I did watch um, Rob Barclay's video where he was talking to – oh, my gosh, Peter, what's his name? His, like, William. Malaysian friend who breeds ball pythons. He matches U.S. prices in Malaysia also. Yeah. And he, he does, like, a slight discount for, like, local instead of charging them more. And, and I was like – do we need to match U.S.? Like, why is U.S. special here? Is 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 the U.S. market like big enough that it like sets pricing? I think it's I don't just because generally the global economy uses like the U.S. dollar as a big comparison, right? That's a really good number. Fifty clashes. Arwin, that's right. Thank you, Peter. And Matt's here. Yeah, Matt is here. Hi, Matt. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. The U.S. It like. I was once told that it's a global economy, like as in the snake world, it's a global industry. We should be paying attention to the global market. Mm -hmm. And that generally is not run, but like it's led by the Americans in the snake world. It is. I don't know if we should be in charge. <laughs> I said it's led. I didn't say you're in charge. <laughs> but it's been led by the Americans so far. Um, so everyone kind of just follows that, right? And I think it's just easier for a lot of other foreign countries to america to buy like on that right Ty, yeah. taiwan all this stuff all of them go by the american dollar just makes a lot more sense i think it's just an easy conversion for a lot of places too i don't think it has to be overthought more than that okay okay but canadians i like to sell stuff high end or anything in canada right canadians will have no problem selling to other canadians it's that sometimes the inquiry just come from the states and it's like who put the money in my hand first sure it just feels like don't play Las Vegas, bro. <laughs> Herbert, go away. You're an ultra male guy. Go away. It just feels like Canadians wake up in the morning, ball by them breeders, and are like, if I can't go ultra high end and, and be an export type Canadian, I, I can't go full time. Like there's not enough internal sales. Is that true? Or do you rely on exports? Or is there enough internal sales? I guess there can't be because there's, there's not that many show hounds or whatever. There's enough internal to to make an okay living at it. I think I think all the Canadians can probably do fine. Um, but I think they'd also have to do a little more work to make it happen, though. Mm -hmm. They'd have to actually go to shows. A lot of the big breeders don't go to shows. They don't do mm -hmm. shows anymore. Like Corey Woods hasn't done a show in many, many years. He also hasn't, like, changed his collection composition has he bought anything yeah he is monsoons he's bought a sunset hypo in 2023 okay. Good. He, he wouldn't tell me the price of that when i was at his house i was like tell me he's like no i'm like was it the most you've ever spent he's like no but it's close he's like i spent a lot of money on that who who did you know he bought it from or is that a secret? uh i want to say john's jungles i think so okay but i don't know many people have sunset hypos males for sale so mm -hmm. but he is monsoon he was big and he's but he's into monsoon. He bought stuff from. Uh, he bought stuff from Dave Green directly from Dave Green. What do you think about monsoon right now? I think monsoon is very cool. I think, funny enough, I think Corey Woods, he produced Super Enchi, 
monsoon. I think it's lesser too, but it actually looks different. It looks different. I think that is super cool, and I think it's underrated how how much work the super engine did to that monsoon. Do you think, think monsoon is enough. overpriced? At what price? What are you talking about? Like right now, you can buy a male for like seven thousand. No, that's probably fine. I mean, everything like maybe, is fine. I just maybe, mean like, like relative offer, to the number of heads that we basically know our heads. A lot. Well, I have a friend. They so the story goes they bought a snake from Billy years a special years and years ago, a special or a crystal years and years ago. And they bred it out, and then Billy came back asking for it because he found out that somewhere deep in his line, because he bought the his original crystal came from Dave Green, right? Mm-hmm. All of Dave Green's monsoons popped out of his crystals or his mon- or his Mojaves, right? Mm-hmm. So his stuff was linked to it. So Billy ended up with monsoons with pot like a, some het. And it proved mm-hmm. out. So my friends popped out generic balls. You can look them up on IG. They popped out monsoons in the last couple of years from like pause, pause hat things. And so like, if you there's go a look lot at specials right now on Morph Market, just regular specials, not known het monsoons, you can see het monsoon markers on a percentage of them all the time. Yeah, that may make sense that a lot of them just got out there, right? But so I, what I'm saying is like, does the the homozygous form Price makes sense if Com- pets that there's are pets out there. hypothetically everywhere. Uh, I didn't find okay. Not. Like, if you want to say, like, it's priced at 7000 if you want to, I believe if you offered 5000 and you got it for 5000 that's yeah, probably Yeah, I think fine. you can probably like, get some of them for 5000 Yeah, I think that's fine for a single gene recessive. I think 5000 is fair for a single gene recessive. If project, you can buy even with people ahead pets of you, for $200, is that the right? Mail? You can buy males for that much. I don't know about females. Females are probably still five to a thousand. Not a hundred percent heads, but like oh. probable head. Probable you know, heads. Link. Oh, you probably get those dirt cheap. That's what I'm saying. Like, like you could buy a, like one point three for probably like five hundred bucks. Right. Yeah. Same until up. the test until the test becomes available. And it's coming. But it is coming. But. Like the question is always like, is half of a monsoon worth two hundred dollars? Makes sense if the visual two pieces of a monsoon are worth five to seven thousand dollars. That's like too much of a gap to me. So either like the heads need to come up or the visual. Has well, to come I up. agree. I think I think the healthier industry would be the heads go up. Yes. I think. <laughs> Actually, the ingredients are far too underpriced for all a lot of projects. And that we would be a healthier industry if we went up instead of drive everything down. Yeah, that yeah. Or like, like hypo DG clowns are what thirteen thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars from Fireball, mm-hmm. but you can get a pair of triple hats for a thousand bucks. Yeah, and I'm you like get being a male nice, like, hypo clown head DG or whatever for some combo bucks. for yeah. seven hundred bucks for not yeah. that much. Yeah. I know Justin has like combo DG double head hypo club males on Morph Market for like fifteen hundred dollars US, right? Spot nose DG something something, and I'm like, that's pretty cheap for a fifty to potentially make. Now, where I think why that value is a little off, like where I yes, the prices should go up, but I don't think it's incredibly difficult because let's say you did buy that one point three pos at monsoons, we'll say fifty percent heads or I don't care what they are, mm-hmm. for five hundred bucks or even a thousand. You still have to raise up those females for no less than two years. That's correct. So you have to sit on these for two, three years before you get out there. So if you produce a three thousand dollar recessive, but you you instead of investing the dollars, you invest the time. And I think there should be a payoff for that too. And if that happens to be three thousand dollars or two twenty five hundred dollars, you're still winning. People. Get I guess my though. question is, since hats have been like fairly reasonably priced. You know, two thousand dollars last year. Now and now this year, you can buy them for eight hundred. Male, hundred percent heads. People have been making pos heads for a long time, holding them back. Are we due for somebody to come in and buy a monsoon male and breed to twenty pos head females or whatever this year and next year, which will produce many monsoons next year before your stuff even grew up that's maybe like also where i'm going through it it's probably already happening Corey mm-hmm. wood's original 
male that he bought and he has a if you go to his website he has a birthing record so everything is public right for him mm. he originally had a lesser ng head monsoon male and he bred the crap out of that to like pied females toffee females like uh, all the all the stuff he wants him all his project animals right he wants to make double heads or mm. hats pos he held back all the pos heads that looked crazy and bred them all together Th those are where his animals came from right his lesser mm. his stuff came from double head um het pos hat pos double heads right mm -hmm. and he just missed on the double i think they're toffees in that clutch the picture that you showed and um it still looks so yeah, cool. He's, he's already kind of done it, right? I know he's bought a monsoon male. Right. I think many thing. people did it. So like, I think he's just going to do that. He's going to read the crap out of it. Fall down relatively yeah. quickly at this moment. Well, it always does at this point, right? Justin said on the Herb Collectors when he was with Ozzy, he's like, you either get it at the very top or just wait and get in when everyone kind of has it and you get to play with it way more. You don't have to like, you don't have to race to reproduce it right. to make back your money, right? If you bought a monsoon at a thousand bucks, now you're like, you know what? Nobody's done tri stripe monsoon. I'm gonna go do this because you don't have to worry about trying to make back ten or fifteen or thirty grand. Right. Playing around in the dirt with the, <laughs> the with the pores. <laughs> that's to me it's almost more fun because you're just like, ah fuck it. I just need to get like a couple of sellable things out of the clutch and it'll pay for the parents. But mostly, I'm, this is like a personal thing yeah. I'm doing here, over here. <laughs> and so it doesn't matter if you're trying to add a, a weird gene into clown or something common. Because you're just doing it. You're not that worried about it. That's my, yeah. my, that's my favorite that's, part of breeding that, that's a lot of That's a lot of the hobby, though, right? And then you, like, you work your way up again. And to answer that question, it was more was found. The more is in the Stranger Lines, quote unquote, more monsoon. Mm -hmm. It popped out My of, stranger uh, is rolling stuff. I don't know if the dad has it, but it's like two generations away from a moray. Right. So it and they're they're compatible. So the moray, I don't think anyone's going to call their stuff moray. It's all going to be monsoon. Moray is a dead deadline. It's going to be. I like both names a lot, though. It's I don't like right. moray name. I don't like saying it. Monsoon's way easier, way cooler. It's a fucking eel, though, brother. Use it for a different gene, then. It's a cool eel. Nah. It looks like it's got pharyngeal jaws inside, so it looks like the alien. I get it. See that? That yeah. was live action rendition. That was live action rendition from Aliens too. Oh my god, I love it. With All right, anyway, I was <laughs> that sexual tension. Those I'll never forget it. Those prequels are terrible. Let's not talk about those ones. Not the prequels. I'm talking about I Alien. I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> Aliens. It's game over, man. It's game over. Bill Paxton, save me. I need him to save me from tornadoes also. Right. It's game Did over, you see man. the Twisters trailer? No. It's not Twister 2. It's Twisters. <laughs> but it's not going to have... My husband's like, you got to watch this. And I'm like... I got to watch it now. I'll watch it's it It's pretty good. I oh, guess, but Bill Paxton's dead, so like it's not the same. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. I'm like, Bill Paxton's not gonna be in it, so not the same. He's not gonna be chasing tornadoes with his sex therapist. It's so fiance. good, <laughs> and it was written by Michael Crichton, which like, he did the screenplay for it. Yeah, which is why it's like somehow also perfectly you like got in the suck zone. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't long ago I rewatched that movie. It's so bad. I watch it once a year at this point. Yeah, now I live in Oklahoma, so I have to. It's like a Did role. you see my cows? <gasps> He's in it for the money, not the science. Food. That's what I say all the time. Food. <laughs> no, we're not going to my... It's so Food. good. Okay, I'll stop quoting movies. I like pop culture way yeah. too much. I did watch Avatar. Uh, the show? Yeah. Yeah? Did you like it? You don't look impressed. I don't know. Is Iroh's good? It, it literally caused you? like a like a turmoil in my soul. So I so I, would, I was like so sleeping at night. I'm like ah, like you get a cold sweat. And you're going to like an emotional <laughs> like Zuko in season three, and you're like, what do I do? What do I do <laughs> with this knowledge? It's in my head now. So I have a standing thing about pop culture. I do not watch. If something's in one medium, I do not watch it in another medium or like try to watch a remake. So like 
this really takes someone off of my life. What about Lord of the Rings? I've I've never read the books. Oh. I've only watched the movies, and I love the yeah, movies. Yeah, the books are good, and movies are also good. In yeah, but way. I just refuse because then it's going to probably ruin it. And I'm just not going to be happy. Okay, you should do it. Those ones like, are feel feel different, separate but equal. And maybe they're the exception to the rule because there's always an exception to the rule. Okay, but for the most part, like Harry Potter, I've never read, but I've watched all the movies because I really I enjoy them. But I find like it ruins one of the mediums for me, and that happened because Hitchhikers got to the galaxy. I read the book, big fan. And then the movie, in my opinion, sucked. And I was like, oh, I'm so disappointed. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I just don't go back and forth anymore. So like Avatar is one of those worlds. I'm like, I don't know if I want to do it. <laughs> it's so, it's so, I won't, no, no spoilers. <sighs> like, it's very weird why it's concerning. So if people watch it and you're like, it's fine. Six I, out of ten. Most people will probably think that. Yeah. But, but like they front loaded emotional stuff from later like oh books. they try to hook you in emotionally yeah you yeah. don't get to do like bossing say emotional stuff bossing say. In, at the in, time of bossing say like they use the like the 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 theme song for iroh's son at a moment when iroh's remembering it which is something that is paid off in the second season like why, why iroh yeah. is irreverent and fun they like pull forward all of those emotional beats way early. And so you're like, is Zuko going to have his fucking girl boss transformation sequence now in season one? It's what it seems like. Cause they're like building up all this shit, but I'm like, yeah. this is all supposed to be front loaded way back in the fucking, yeah. so they like changed the pacing. And I'm like, of course they like, did. CGI is good, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's just makes me feel bad. I get it. Like, I need to be cleansed now spiritually. <laughs> go watch go rewatch the I film, will. The original. But yeah, I know I watched sorry. the Death Note movie on Netflix. Oh yeah, sorry about that. And then people no, I liked it cuz I never watched the anime or anything. And so that I just, watched just, One Piece that on takes so many people Netflix and I thought it was it. better than One Piece. Yeah, see? Let's see. That's see. And I've watched movie. both. I just thought One Piece was slow as shit in the beginning. <laughs> All right, sorry, Monsoon we got off topic. Monsoon is a dead project because there's definitely more dead monsoons than living viable ones. Oh, shots fired! That is a shot fired across the bow. I guess the question is, like, is the monsoon curse real? Anthony said it wasn't real when I talked to him about it. I heard. I, I listened to that podcast. Have you heard any other dead monsoon stories besides the... <sighs> I do know some that are dead. I know some too, but I know some heads that are dead. I know I know significant ones that are dead. I know one I my friends that made one, they had one die in the egg. Just one, but all the other ones have survived. But one out of like, I don't know, three or four. That's a pretty high percentage rate. But again, that might be too small to um that might be too small of a sample size. Right, but I've heard of multiple dead in the egg. But do you think that could just be not enough outbreeding? But I don't know. Are people not outcrossing? Like, like Corey Woods obviously outcrossed the, the shit out of it. Like, I guess, I guess we probably will find out the next two years, this year and next year. Like by twenty twenty five, we should have any. We should have knowledge. The breeder. To be the, fair, the price I have a male het monsoon that I'm breeding this stuff, so I'm like in <laughs> or whatever. I'm financially invested. Not for very much, though. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I, I do like what you said. They get the dead. I don't think it's a dead project, only because there are absolute. Excuse me. There's a, more than one like living adult. There's a lot of living monsoons, right? And females that have laid eggs, right? So they right live right just so the good. females, the combo females live laying eggs stuff. So. It's not dead. It could just be something similar to like what people talk about acid and confusion, that they are, um, that they're very slow growers. They're not the best eaters, stuff like that. It could just mm-hmm. be like they're not super strong when they're babies. But as soon as if they start eating, that they just do fine. That could be it too. Mm-hmm. I mean, people say that about tristripe too. Yeah, if females take too long to grow up. People said that about mahoganies. Mahoganies don't lay eggs. 
but that was proven wrong because people or are female pieds. I've heard about just female pieds, all so female female pieds. <laughs> yeah, but the thing was was that they were highly inbred, mm -hmm. right? Because the value of them a long time ago. So people probably had bad fertility, possibly from just too much inbreeding. And so once they crossed them out, they did fine. Yeah, they're not killing their snakes on purpose. They're saying some monsoon homozygotes and heterozygotes are just dying mysteriously in dying in the egg or soon after shortly thereafter. Yeah, that's what they're saying. I, I would be. I, don't know. I, I don't think. I don't know. I I like it. I think it's fun. I but I like granite jeans in general everywhere they exist. Mm. Like gr granite mex mex. Granite berms. Granite leopard berms are really cool. Leopard boas that have like a really granally exploded pattern. I, do so like, like, I like busy patterns. That's probably why I like the monsoon so much. I like busy, mm -hmm. busy patterns. I got a tri stripe, but I still like busy, busy patterns. Not Tristan's right. He people don't take inbreeding in consideration of with ball pythons. In boas, it's considered a lot more. Yeah. At least I from think... my knowledge. I people think people don't know how inbred all of their ball pythons are. Collect like you could have bought them from ten different people, but they're, but still they're inbred. incredibly inbred because they're from like the same three collections, basically. <laughs> well, that's the thing you have to be careful. Like I know, I know what Will works with. I know what Corey Woods works with. So I know for like generally, like I'm buying new blood if I'm buying from them. Um, stuff like that. I'm in the project. I'm not trying to kill it. I just seek truth. You know? I've heard that before about like people kill project that happened around the banana times when people were mm -hmm. like, if you don't, cause you didn't buy banana, like you're just trying to kill the project. And I'm like, nah, bro. When someone's got pictures of a four gene combo banana female on eggs, it ain't as rare as you think it is. <laughs> like they've raised this up for years and it's got like four other genes in it. They obviously, like it's been around. Do you think that's collusion? I do believe so. That that like I don't know. They go to the island of Doctor Moreau or, or whatever, and the the first people who buy in are like, breathe the piss out of it, but don't sell any of it. I think it's because at the time, the same people were all friends, and they probably sold to each other, and they all want to like they don't want to tell anyone about it, right? I'm just gonna breathe this to you know fifty. Animals. So you think they were like trading amongst each other? Yeah, mostly. Definitely did. Yeah, that's the fucking buddy price problem right there. That's like that's like yeah. part of the problem. It's like this isn't like a fair you, market pricing yeah, system. The it's coral partially glow, a fake price. The coral glow, the original white smoke, that was originally a white smoke, and mm -hmm. uh, was what it's called, and it was a female. And that came from Nerd. They did a core glow. I think he had buddy prices and gave it to friends. Now, he probably traded or sold it, but he probably, like, here, Will Banks, here, you get one first. Right. We don't know. Don't sue us or whatever. I, there's always been a problem of, like, once people They've are already in, that, though, it's yeah. easier to stay at the tippy top because you're just sort of working together being buddies. But, like, yeah. to buy your way in... Would it's cost costume, more right? than they were already put in to begin with because they could just trade between each other. Basically, to the cost of them would be a hundred dollars per snake to make it ring. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Y'all should watch uh. Doctor Brew this episode. He talks about like ball it's python a great people should breed a ball python to a wild cup ball python sometimes and go backwards. Now I do think that's I. Speaking of that, I don't think hobby breeders have to necessarily do that. I think that should be on some bigger breeders, more importantly, who have very large collections to outcross their stuff. Do I just think that could be like a value add of a hobby breeder? It could be, but it's also a lot of opportunity cost them because nobody cares right now about Yeah, it. but the big breeders have like big payrolls and shit. They don't have that big payroll. Not all you know what I mean. Big cost, yeah. rent. If oh. they don't rent anything, then they're... They can just, you know, they give me money if it's so... Co like, if it, like... I don't think they're hurting for money for most of them. They posted their sales online, like, oh, I did a million dollars in 2023. Now, there is a lot of cost to that. 
but I'm like, they're not hurting. They're not worried about where their next meal is coming from. If they, they can breed three normals, it's not going right, to hurt the million people dollar out. paycheck. Well, to help yeah. out the, the industry, right? It doesn't have, I, I should put it this way. It's fine to do if you're a hobby level breeder or low or like a lower tier breeder, but it shouldn't just fall on us to preserve the market. The integrity of the species. For them to make a ton of money on, right? Yeah, Peter, I disagree. I see like nasty ball pythons all the time, like deformed heads. We don't see them in ball pythons, but they are there. We I've seen them on board market. People sell them for money, and I'm like, get that shit out so of here. So you want to talk about that? <laughs> Do you think people should be selling shark mouth animals no. for like a fraction of what the investment cost is and that people should be breeding them? I think people probably should humanely euthanize them. I agree. I do not believe people should. If be they're totally them. fine or whatever, and it's like a normal, you can hide the heads, give that to a kid, whatever. And it's just like a little bit. But I've seen people post like, oh, this snake is like, you know, maybe it's a $10,000 snake. They got it for six or four because that is strike. But they're like, yeah, I'm breeding it this year. And I'm like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's dumb. Also, like doing the same thing for parthenogens. People will sell parthenogens for almost retail or retail. Sometimes yeah. tell you, sometimes like, don't tell the you. The risk is on you. <laughs> that that shit is not worth breeding, and its mother should be probably shipped off to a farm upstate you because know, is it, yeah, because it's the likelihood terrible. of it rehappening. Like one of the mother, what's the likelihood of it happening again? I don't know, but it's heritable. Her ability to do that, she is basically homozygous recessive for the ability to do that. Right. So because all of her daughters will be het for that, even if the male isn't. Gotcha, Whatever. gotcha. Okay, I know what you're saying. This is what you and uh, Warren were talking about. The the leader, right. the, I can't say the word, but the the nasty negative ge genetics that underline that we don't visually see are also being compounded when we breed our morphs, right? Right. And that is what the outcrossing. Would so, like a with. parthenogen is like the ultimate form of yeah. inbreeding crisis. Yeah, it's a clone, right? Right, but I'm, like it could be like, it, like close, that's the closest to one that you get, right? <laughs> so you don't want females, even if sometimes they will breed sexually, to do that in your collection. You don't necessarily want to hold back babies from her either. So you don't want parthenogen females. You don't go like, hey, cool, I got all these. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, you don't You're want like, them, get and out. you don't want the moms that do that. Go find a either. very large king cobra and feed it. Yeah, to me, it's like embarrassing when people are like, "I bought a parthenogen." I'm like, "Excuse me, what?" You, you paid money for it. I can understand, like, I got it for free <laughs> to, like, keep as a pet because it could die at any time. If yeah. you have paid money for a parthenogen, you weren't scammed, but you do, you do not know what the quality of that animal is based on looking at it. Let me just yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I... parthenogen buyers. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's cool. But parthen parthenogens, like they usually don't live very long either. Now we've got them, like some Don't people have raised do. them up to breed. Don't them do, yeah. But I don't think that breed that part. I don't think we need to. I I've heard right. We people... don't need to in a world with mini ball pythons. So everyone talks about like the quality and quality out. Do you know how many times I've heard of people being like someone being like, well, here's another good example. You and Anthony on your podcast were talking about the the kinks monsoon that's on Morph Market, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I agree that like it, it, I didn't see the picture, but you you or well, at least Anthony said like the, the kink is so low that it shouldn't affect breeding, right? It's like so below the tail. Right. It wasn't it was like a little bump. But too. I don't even know if it was sure. like, a true kink or like it looked like the just tail was going and it was like thing. a little bump bone. Sure, spur. just a malformation or something, deformity. Right. Would you think that animal should be sold at all? Like uh, my belief is that we probably shouldn't. I don't know. It's hard, right? Because sometimes tail kinks are 100% developmental and aren't genetic. Right. But there's no way to know in this case. Right, until you do it. Unless you test it or breed it. Like, and I got a bunch of tail kink boas. Do you because... want to spend five grand to see if it's genetic or not? No. But th mine, but, but but these boas are like 200 bucks. So, like, I could take that's off 50 bucks. Though. It's got a little tail kink. A little pet person's going to yeah. think that's cute. But that's different. I, We're talking pets versus investment. Pets, like, a tail kink is. If it's so not going to. you think a $10,000 snake who has a tail, a subcloacal tail kink, should be not in mainly the euthanized pool? instead of in the breeding pool? Yes. Because no one, you don't want to sell it for pet price. Well, you can't. Well, yeah, someone you will breed be. it. Right? Yeah, you, you should. Either you keep it yourself and don't breed it. Or humanely euthanize it. 
in some one form or another, either for snake food or just you may euthanize it and never do anything. I, yeah, I, it is hard. I just like a public... dog, you could you could chop off its balls and put it in a pet home, right? Yeah, and you yeah. would know that you as the breeder of like that happens all the time, species. right? It's can't do that for snakes. Animals that have like hip display, like they're tested for hip dysplasia. They're like, oh, this is more prone to it or something. And they're like, okay, this thing got to be, you know, uh, spayed or neutered and cannot be bred. We don't do that in snakes. Yeah. The like sub cloaca tail kink, I think, is tough because they happen a lot without yes. it being heritable. So you, that you one can, is more yes. tough. But my general, like, and that, that could, I, I've told you before. Nothing's everything's a gray area. Nothing's really black and white. So you could absolutely have exceptions to the rule, and you just have to make a call, a call on it. Um, and uh, that person saying, I don't, "I'm an idealist," I absolutely understand that. I, I don't even begrudge them. I say, "You do you. You do what you want to do." Um, I'm just saying, I wish if in a perfect world, I wish that wouldn't happen, because I sell. think we're just hurting our own projects. I think we're just hurting our own animals that we all claim to love. Um, but I do understand like people do it anyway, because you know, money drives people like crazy. So money makes people crazy. Based in the world of finance, I've seen money make people go crazy for any reason. People try to tell me it's not true, but I'm like, nah, it's true. <laughs> I saw someone once like their mother was on their deathbed and the daughter was just like taking money out of the ATM every day with the debit card. And then the mother recovered. We had to like get it all back. I was very awkward position at that. Oh time. no! Yeah, yeah. The twin sister had to like fly in from Colorado. It was really messy. Oh no! But yeah, I'm like, yep. Yeah, money makes people go crazy. So, uh, I think it's not. It, it's it's a disingenuous argument to compare. Should a human with some sort of issue breed versus should an animal with some sort of issue breed? Because humans are. It's not the same ethical question. Agreed. And then we're also not probably talking about the same kind of level. Yeah, it's just not the same kind of question. Right. It's like people not. people make bring that up all the time. Like, do you want to euthanize my my nephew with Down syndrome? I'm like, no, we're not talking. These aren't even the same topics. Not even the same yeah. topics. Like, please, like the severe metabolic bone disease, bearded <laughs> dragon, who's in incredible play, pain so bad it's like hunched over and eh. please euthanize that. I'm not talking about humans yeah. at all. I can understand that. No, very, we're not talking about that. No, it's totally <laughs> yeah. different topics. That's, that's not this com that's not the <laughs> podcast for you. No. Peter, and no. I get the topic is very personal to you, but it's not meant in that way. So I apologize if I offended you. Um, yeah. I, <sighs> it's different. We're, it's we're, different. It's is it heritable? Bumpy tails? It depends. Like caramel albinos haven't made it inheritable. It's inheritable in them. They have more wild kinks, right? Sometimes have, like, it's one hundred percent environmental, and uh, there's no. Well, sense. caramel albinos are not environmental. Yeah, right. In caramel, it's not. <laughs> like in cor corn snakes, will kink fairly regularly. <laughs> will they really? <laughs> I, yeah. I haven't bred corn snakes yet. I'm going yes. to. I'm going to breed your Miami. Oh, fuck. Good. Uh, they <laughs> they kink a lot. But I literally think sometimes it's linked to the line or whatever, maybe inbreeding. Sometimes I think they just got like a weird vibe. Like the mom didn't put enough vitamin A or something in the eggs. Yeah. And so should you breed those? No. But if the kinks are minor, can they be rehomed as pets? Yeah. They're all, you know, who cares? They're all corn snakes are all like $50. And like it's... Maybe I'm the asshole because maybe I'm the one saying that that snake shouldn't be bred because it takes one more snake out of the breeding pool and I'm technically preserving a higher price. People can like, to be fair, that can be, you know, mm -hmm. I can be considered the asshole in this case. Also, like you, some of them, their asshole. kinks become like so severe. You can tell they have. The the small kinks as a pain. baby sometimes do grow. Like, right. The They'll like bigger, bump right? out so of the skin. Too. And right. it does, it doesn't change position, but it definitely interacts. That has to have right? pain, right? The, Sometimes the, it does. The, the tissue isn't normally shaped. There has to be arthritis yeah. around yeah. the joint. That's it's probably not pain. comfortable. Or like snakes that have like part of their back end doesn't move properly. Like their muscles, <laughs> they're just like partially paralyzed. I don't know if you've ever seen those. I'm like, oh, this probably should not be alive, but sure. But I'm also a person, if you want to talk like idealist, I'm also a person that thinks people force feed their snakes too often 
to try to sell them. Yeah. And people people jump to assist feeding way too soon. People be like, oh, I didn't eat on the first two tries. I'm going to start putting a mouse in its mouth. Yeah, people I'm like, start... you're crazy. People... Uh, people's kindness is not a kindness in the end. If they're like force feeding this no eyeball python for a year and it dies anyway. Uh, was that kindness or was it, would it have better to humanely euthanize that one? Well, they say, well, like if the quality of life is fine, I don't mind just doing this. I'm like, but is it really having a quality of life? Right. How do you know? Like something with no voice can't scream last time I checked. Right. So it, it's kind of like, it's, are we just patting ourselves up? I've had this argument before years ago where people like kind of, well, they'll say they're rescuing an animal, but they don't also have an ideal setup of any sort. So like the animal needs another rescue from the rescuer. And I'm like, right. It, you're, you're like, I'll give you credit for being one step above like total abuse, but you need to also rehome this somewhere better. You have to understand your limitations. I saw it with monitors and stuff like that. I'm like, no, yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> it, it's just hard when people are like misassigning their own values to an animal because they think that that's the most ethical thing possible when the, yeah we can in go my to the, opinion when my opinion doesn't count the more ethical choice would be humane euthanasia yeah for, I, I do for think. an animal that looks like a pretzel i've seen pretzel animals at shows that are like interaction pets like a big super skinny female and yeah. she's got like a 90 degree turn in the middle i'm and, just like yeah that probably should like, just been called what out. does she feel okay. like yeah. she's like well she's so nice well what you don't can't ask her what it feels like to have a 90 degree bend permanently yeah. in your spine well it's like those people who rescue animals from a pet store it could be someone in chat so i apologize if i call you out but it's like when they rescue when they like oh i have to rescue this animal from pets petco or pet smart and it's like yeah but now you just doom 10 more animals to be replaced so you just killed 10 animals and they're like but this one's alive and i'm like but you <sighs> killed 10 animals directly due to your I like a purpose. lot of the stuff when when it gets the Petco pet smart, is actually in fine condition. It, it you know what I, I mean? believe it's the, the pet suppliers cars. are good. Yeah, because you're buying there, all wholesale now. Like you're buying breeder stock now. They don't. Listen, they're not treated like shit. I don't know if Chris wants me to mention it. Chris, are you in chat? Purchase probably not. Rescue. Copperhead. Anyway, those dart frogs I saw at Petco are supposedly Josh's frog dart frogs. Like right? probably, yeah. So so like and that lychee. Where the fuck did all that shit come from? They, yeah. they were all, they look great. So like the people who are probably killing stuff is probably people who are rescuing it from the Petco. Yeah. <laughs> Half the time. I know They're, some of the stuff looks rough. Some of the ball pipes look like they have That could be uh, sitting there for too long and the employees don't know what they're doing right. and like they just aren't taking proper care of it. That happens to you. I'm not saying like it's no pet stores are all notorious. I just don't think they're as bad as they don't have great information sometimes, but they're not too super terrible. I think people are largely just dumb, no matter what. That's you. But, like, <laughs> I know Corey Woods wholesales a lot of stuff out to those pet stores. Excuse me. To people that – the wholesalers that do ship ship out there, right? I've been in Corey Woods' house many times. I've seen his collection. Like, his animals aren't crap, right? So, like, it's not like it was the breeder's fault. Unless they stay at the wholesalers for too long, that would be an issue. Yeah, I think a lot of the things that happened that were bad when I worked there were – Almost like deeply unintentional <laughs> on every level. Yeah, I worked like in they would come in well, we have clean, but like the cage we had, what you couldn't get the humidity up because you had to use really right. bark. There was no cocoa oh, yeah, at that and time. Pet appears like ash or turf. Yeah, yeah, and I then, then you're, you're like, over, yeah. and then they would they wouldn't want to eat because they had to be on display all day, and so we'd yeah. have to take him in the back at night, and I had to put him in paper bags because I had to co house him, so you couldn't feed him in the cage at night. And so they wouldn't want to eat. So they the hives aren't really small or snug. They're kind of big, what's on the shelf. Yeah, so they never yeah. really ate in the store. But the faster they left, they would do okay because they would right. go. But if they stayed a long time, they wouldn't do okay. So it's like just... a comedy of errors for yeah. all pythons anyway. I'm sure it's across the board. I, I was 16. My first job was at a pest store in the reptile section. That was like, wow, what was I? Like the early 2000. I was a young kid. And we had like Calabar burrowing pythons, like it randomly in a pet store. We had lots of wild caught stuff. And like, so right. obviously that goes, like, we didn't have enough cap, not enough breeders. And right. back then, Dude. back then you didn't have more so that you can get in pet stores, right? Mm -hmm. We do need, so here's what's, what's hard do we need more breeders or less breeders or different kinds? In of Canada, breeders? we need more. We're missing 
the entry level hobby breeder, like the step up from the pet keeper and below like certain whatever, however you want to say there's a ladder or tier system. There is, right? There's obviously a caste system. Mm -hmm. But we're we're missing that in Canada because it's very hard to sell like probably decent animals to breed, but people don't want it. So like either people are buying near the high end and the mid tier is really missing. Do you think it's because a, a an intro breeder selling to pet keepers doesn't have enough places to sell in Canada, like shows and. Kijiji. I think that's. I think it's multiple reasons. There's, there's no one. Usually these things are never one very Like there's multiple variables. One variable is that there's a hundred percent that. The other one I think is we did it to ourselves. We have not bred confidence into people coming into the bit into the hobby to breed snakes in Canada or in the in whole. whole. To be fair, it's whole. I've seen a lot of small breeders be like. I would tell someone to get into another species before ever buying a ball python. But I'm like, you breed ball pythons. Why are you going to, like, complain about the prices in the market? I do complain about also it. also tell everyone Am I a bad person? never come here. <laughs> you can't be, like, you can, we can talk about it. Like, we're having this discussion. I don't think it's complaining. But it's No, like, I complain. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Fine. You want to complain. But I'm like, I you just also think can't... everyone should breed ball pythons and then something else too. That's fine. That, that's that would be like a balance. That's table. fine too. But my point is like when someone's like, well, don't don't ever buy ball python to breed them. Don't breed them at all. But I'm like, but you're selling ball pythons. How can you tell people not to buy them if they like them, if they want to breed them? Right. It's because not very good marketing. Choice. Like for your hobby. We're not breeding our own, like we need to breed confidence in our own cell, like our own marketplace, right? How do we do that? How do we do that? How, how do we, we make stop, people confident they can How do we stop completely shitting on the market? That's the start. <laughs> stop saying the market crash and it's dead and we're never like it's never coming back kind of thing. Okay. Well, you say well some people would, would say that I am saying the market is crashing. No, I think you you I've, I've watched enough of your podcast and your stock reports and stuff that you're pretty reasonable. Like, hey, the prices have come down. Right, but some people think any criticism of any price change right, or like an constructive is, criticism is somehow like a condemnation of the whole. I've said thing. this to other people. I'm like, I'm positive about the the industry's been around since you know the ball python industry's been around since the late '90s, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, really, kind of there for like 30 years. It isn't as long as people want pet snakes and as long as they're not illegal to import export, ball pythons are going to be the king. Like it's just not mm -hmm. going to change. Um, right, there's nothing that really fits that. Corn snakes weird. used to be the number one, but corn snakes ran out of new mutations. That's my point. That's they're my also point. too wiggly. Yes, for little kids, yeah, kids don't like them. They're too I think corn snakes are way better than ball pythons, Agreed. but I acknowledge that the market does not agree with me, right? Most I agree. people want a fast they don't like, slug. They don't like this. <laughs> But my friends who got like I gave them uh, I had a Nelson's milk snake and I gave it to my my friend's kid because he really wanted a milk snake, mm -hmm. and he it it's like an adult he loves it but because it's, it's pretty gentle it's pretty chill he like it's a good size right and I think they're great they move around more than ball pythons right they're active during the day they have different perks yeah yeah I think the the hard part about ball pythons to me. When people first start, if they start only in ball pythons, they become a ball python person. And it takes a lot to be like, hey, you know, if you just didn't do hundreds of ball python sales a year, <laughs> you know what's just funny, did though? something else, the whole market wouldn't be <laughs> crashing around you because supply and demand. If we all make hundreds of ball pythons. It's true. But you know what's funny? A lot of the ball python people I know. It, and especially if they came in new, they buy up hog noses like three years later. They like that's for whatever reason that's the transition to. Well, they're hog trying noses to smorph. Yeah, and they and I know a lot of people who get out because hog noses are like they're they're food aggressive, and they mm -hmm. just want to eat everything, and you got to pry them off your freaking fingers and shit like that. It's really and, funny though because they're like drop they, their so they drop shit their everywhere. mouth like a little. Like basking shark, and they just yeah, sort of they go like this. <laughs> it's so they, funny. they just go nuts. Yeah, there's like whatever comes in here, I'm gonna get it. Just like the Simpsons, right? They're I I like them. They're fine. I I they're don't cool. really want hundreds of them. I know people I do, do want hundreds of corn snakes though. This is my like mortal weakness. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, so hard they get a hog nose. I just think you need to find out these. Actually, the underrated uh, sister 
species that people should get with ball pythons because they can live on the same rack they come from and the same area or african house snakes yeah i'm a huge fan or of fat african house geckos snakes. or whatever or fat, i love fat tails too uh i'm a huge house house snake fan for years and years Do you and have some? i don't or have any anymore i sold them i i will get back into them but they they're colubrids essentially they're not colubrids but they're essentially very similar but they don't cool. You don't have to cool them. They don't go in brumation, right? Because they come from a warmer climate. Mm -hmm. You just keep them like they're constrictors. Right. So but if they you, eat way better than ball pythons. Right. If your room temp goes down, they could die also. <laughs> yes. Yes. If you don't take care of them, they do require heat. But I mean, for a ball python keeper, you're just keeping a slightly drier version, a better eater, right? It's not It's not a big transition, right? Going to colubrids that need brumation if you want to breed them. Yeah, I... They're very easy. Step would love it if people were like, else. "What is my room best suited to?" And they're like, "Oh, it's from Africa. Fat tails." <laughs> yeah, House so snakes. I do that, right? I'm like, yeah. I, I have uh, black milk snakes. My buddy and I up in Ottawa, he he has them because he does collier or he does milk snakes and bull snakes, and he's gonna keep them because he's gonna breed them now. I would probably have sold them by now for ball pythons, but because I love ball pythons too much, but. Mm -hmm. He's going to breed them and we'll have these cool milk snakes and we'll split them however we want. He's a good friend. And uh, like every time he shows me pictures, they tickle my fancy because they're fun to look at. They're super big, cool. It's, yeah, they just snake, look right? different. So you want, people want to look at something different sometimes. Yeah, and I got my, he gave me an albino tangerine hunter and milk snake. And I love her. She's actually in a little closure in my bedroom. And mm -hmm. just like, here you go. Here's your mouse a week. And just like back yeah, to when I was a kid, take care right? Of themselves. Back to when I was a kid keeping corn snakes, one mouse a week, and eh, we'll see how big you get. We'll breed you one day, though. Everything's got to pay rent. Yeah, I, I just don't want people to... So people burn out on ball python industry in a way that's unique yes. to ball I, pythons. As much as I'm positive, I do understand that there's negatives and there's things like that burnout. I know lots of people have burned out, and they're no longer in snakes. Right, so... so they like slowed down early but i do think he's got some like personal exposure growth. yeah got some enclosures maybe even put some ball pythons in enclosures to have fun yeah like, enjoy their ball pythons a little bit and still bred them like wouldn't it be like more chill their hearts I, would be less broken that they weren't millionaires see, so i know people that just came into the you got the first ball python right mm -hmm. and i know people have literally told this is in the discord and people have tried to like sell him snakes and get him into coming a ball python breeder. And he's got a Chris's he's got, like, Discord. Of, yeah. And I have told the guy, I was like, him and I went to the show and he turned to me one day. I was he's like, Aaron, you're the only person who hasn't tried to sell me a snake yet. And I'm like, Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> now part of that is like he went there and he met some people, and then they sold him a snake because he was interested. Like, I get it. But I'm the only one who never tried to like, hey. You have to buy my snake that's available because I'm like, just enjoy your animals. Everyone should, just, if you buy a pet and that's like the purpose you're doing, just enjoy your snakes for a few years. There's going to be more snakes down the road. It, like, is it too predatory? Ball python industry. I think some people are, but I don't think it's the industry itself. You know, like they, so like there's like always if, this if weird tension of like, you need to make your projects better and you want to, right? You want to. Yeah. But then it costs money. So then you have to make it better and you want to improve and you're always like working on it. But then people will prey on your own insecurity. Like, uh, your collection's kind of ass. So, so, you know, buy this from me or buy yeah. this at this price point to make it better, which is true, right? It's true. It will make it better. But then people sort of break emotionally because they're like, I can't, I can't. It's never better. It's be never better enough. And when I go to shows, I sell some, but then like... I think that comes down to a bit of expectations, but here's a... I, I've always believed, and part of it is, we need to have expectations of where we are as a hobby. Where, where each individual person mm -hmm. is as a keeper, and are you a hobby breeder? Are you like a pet breeder? Are you a small business? Are you trying to get to a big business? Like wh wherever level you want, however you want to rate them, whatever levels... You have to be honest with yourself and where you are. Like me, I'm not making a living at my snakes, so I don't need to worry about ten, twenty thousand dollars snakes right now. But do you like to buy in relatively expensive snakes just to keep a small collection? That's the valuable goal. enough to well, export that's kind to of the US? gold in a way, yeah. 
You know what I mean? Is, yeah. But I want to upgrade that, right? I want to go to the net. I, I want to make instead of selling. What like, price point do you buy in for four clusters a year? What I've done is like four thousand, five thousand. Okay. But it depends. There'll be like a couple. But that's of a crazy number, it's, technically, right? It is a crazy number. That's so, like, say, income. like that's to be kind of cool, income. <laughs> <laughs> to be kind of cool and have like an okay collection, you need to buy. Let's say Man. five grand, a snake, like five grand a snake every year, right? Yeah, like three to five grand. You know what's crazy? Snake, you or know what's two. Even crazier is like five thousand dollars in almost any other species gets you like a top end collection. Right. Exactly. Which is oh. so funny, and also, or buys you like a, a low end used car. <laughs> so non snake people buys you are a like really what are shitty you doing? horse. So yeah, there's that too. <laughs> or some it's really all cool relative. Games, but right, but but is that too much pressure? Or it should we be, be like, don't worry about timelines, worry more about the duration of projects? Because once you buy it, it's but I think free. the long I think longevity also like what you're talking about is kind of longevity, right? Like if you just right. worry about keeping your projects and moving them along, like just moving to each achieving each of your goals, mm -hmm. you'll probably be a lot happier and you'll probably be see a lot more long term success in general. Why do people get out? I, like there's lots of reasons we know, but the, there's something else that has nothing to do with well, any of the, the get other out. reasons. Like nothing most people, do. go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. But, like, like you could be like, oh, they got married, they had a kid, yeah. whatever. The, the life variables, yeah. Right. Or they they weren't satisfied in some way, like either financially or project wise, they got out. But but there's like something more essential to that, and I think it has to do with like in here. Because why? Some people should never have gotten out. Like they had a good collection, they spent a lot of money on it. Everyone liked them. They were having fun, hypothetically. Their life was fun. I think sometimes but they, still they just got lose out. the passion. Sometimes they just lose the passion because they don't want to do what we just talked about, which is no matter when a ball pythons. Like Justin looks like he's coasting, but he's not because he still has to. Like he kind of he, he probably could coast for a few years, but he still has to like keep an eye on like what his new projects are, what new genes is he gonna add in to see what they do, right? He can't just he couldn't just sit on the Batman, for example, and be like, Well, I made a Batman and I'm just gonna ride this until it's you know five hundred dollars. So you think if someone is coasting, they're already on their way out? No, like, they have a chance like to like re they have a chance to change it up. I just think if you decide to start coasting, I know my mentor, my original person at Ball Last was a mentor, his friend. He's out, he got out because he he wanted to coast. I remember him and I had a discussion. He's like, "When do I just stop investing? When when do I have to stop putting buying a new snake every year and just you know take like get the money or right? get all the profit?" Now he was still making good money mm -hmm. off of like you know whatever clutches a year. And Couldn't he have? So, like, that is a question. Like, is there a term? Point? To, but then, he, then you eventually you just get it. Like, you eventually, the market just moves past you if you coast for too long, right? That happened to a guy in BC. You know, when you're making past Is it because you have to, like, when you fail to hit it, you must buy it at the right time because, like, the odds will win? So, well, I think that's part of it. But if you're coasting, well, example, this guy in BC, he was making past and selling for, let's say, five grand at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Back in the day. You do that for three years, your snakes are all of a sudden not five. You're not making 60 grand a year off Pastavis. You're making $6,000 a year because they're all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. you, you have 12 of them. Maybe you're making 12,000. You ain't paying your bills with 12,000 compared to 60, right? So if right. you're not innovating and in, in moving your collection up or doing something else, you're, you're going to stagnate and you'll just be forgotten. Now, you don't have to keep growing your collection. Right. By size, I should say. But genetic potency, you probably should be. Well, in, in the age choice. of like upgrades and combos, right? Couldn't you mostly make combos yourself and then see the fruit of that labor six years from now? Hypothetically, and not have to buy anything new. I'm not saying you yes. really shouldn't because yes. you could buy like 10% of your yeah, I mean, collection new each year. You can do that. Like You can buy two double gene animals it doesn't matter what they are right you can spend like say two grand and get like you know 
genetic stripe something and hypo something like hypo pie genetic stripe clone, like i don't judge their clones but you get my point mm -hmm. genetic stripe lavender it doesn't matter genetic stripe ultra mills whatever they are and breathe them together like you raise them up for three years breathe them together then wait another three years and breathe the bait all the quad has together and maybe hit your quad thing you'll you'll eventually pay off right and you yeah all, almost money. any snake bought spread to another snake pays off always <laughs> yeah because like Sometimes they it make takes more multiple snakes. years right but, but that goes back to expectations though people put right that they're gonna people, make a million dollars in a year i think people give up on thinking about it every second of the day they yes get, they just get tired of it really it doesn't matter how and much you put in or how well yeah well but but if you've chosen if you've chosen you gotta be able to got do, a little bit of the tism but if you chose <laughs> i i think about all the time too but you need first of all you need to take breaks that's why i do have a milk snake is because it gives me a break from bull pythons mm -hmm. um and I, I don't think i could exist without i don't think i could exist without having other species around right because i just love my snakes and stuff so much um but i i don't know and not everyone's like me some people just like you said they get into ball pythons and they're only ball python people and then the grind wears them out right no sorry yeah well do you have a million of them you possibly could you, you said 350 dollars each you didn't say how much you didn't say how many you bought i think Math. i think numbers check yeah, there's there's something in people's heads that changes when they get out, and it has to do with like that it, that demotivates them no matter what position they're in, and it it could be lifestyle, but I think it has more to do with like because you can have lots of lifestyle things fuck up and still go keep your it's, snakes. There's there's if also, you really wanted to, yeah, but there's also a lot of grinds to it, right? If you're doing shows, if you're even it doesn't matter if your shows or oh posting God. online, I've you grinded have to deal shows. with you just have to deal with the the tire kickers, the window lickers, you have to deal with all of that trash that comes along with selling stuff. And mm -hmm. you, if you've chosen to make it like have some extra income, not just like break even to pay for your hobby, but to let's say I want $10,000 a year so I can pay my, give myself a good vacation and, you know, have a really good Christmas every year. That's a cool, like my opinion, that's a cool goal because you did it just selling snakes. That's a really neat thing to do. Right. Yeah. And right, if so you do that, then you have to be okay with running a too. business, though. I think enough people say, yeah, I'm running a business, but they don't really understand what goes into running a business. The guy who owns a random Dairy Queen or a Baskin Robbins thinks about their business in the same – like is exhausted from thinking about their business in the same capacity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if they ran a McDonald's, they're still complaining about their fucking McFlurry machine breaking down all the time, right? Well, maybe not the owners of those because those owners probably just make – Fuck I haven't seen a Dairy Queen in years. <laughs> we have a couple here. Respect. I love their. I used to go there all the time when I was little, but yeah. they're gone. I don't know where yeah, they. We went. have them up here still. So they're good. Uh, but you still get my point, right? Like I think, I think you said in here. I think it's up here a lot of the yeah, time too. People want to treat a ball python breeding business or any reptile breeding business like it's a nine to five job where they yeah. can check in and clean snakes and post one but picture on Instagram. Business, then. No business does nine to five. Right. right, but it's not even like that. It needs to be like sort of like an all-consuming madness to keep you motivated long enough. Yeah, and I, I understand where the burnout comes from. I understand you still have to clean out 100. Like even if you're not making money, you still got to clean 100 tubs, right? You still got to clean. I don't even mind food. that part. I just hate people. Well, okay. I, I actually, everyone says that, but I, I've always dealt with people. I like dealing with people. I have no problem. But, you know, you have to, you have to be a sales person. You have to be right, a sales person. You have person, to be a lot of animal jobs. Animal caretaker, that... a scientist, um, right. all this stuff, right? It, it's a lot. Delivery driver, logistics for shipping, a wrap reader at some times if you want to do that. Like, it, it's a lot. And I can understand why people don't want to keep scaling or keep it lower. Yeah, it would be. It's always easier to like be like, oh, it's a pretty fun hobby. If the 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 size of the burden isn't, yeah, that I, bad to begin with. I don't know if he's still here, but Tristan, I bought the lesser tri stripe from him. I was at his house on Monday picking it up, and he showed me his collection. He's happy with his. He said, "Yep, I just want to have like forty adults," and he's 
getting some carpet chameleons. He's got some leopard geckos. He's got leopard tortoise. He's got really cool stuff. And he's, he's happy like, with that. He's happy with his skill because he also has a, a nine to five job that pays his bills, right? Right. So, it's good to be happy with what what you're doing. And I'm like, yeah, everyone gets to a level and they're, they've got to be happy where they are, but the world doesn't work without them. The hobby doesn't work without guys like that, right? Right. He's I think that's most of the hobby jeans. is really like the meat and potatoes of the hobby is a happy 40 guy snakes. doing snakes in a 40, 50 snakes. Yeah. yeah. I, I think more people don't realize that 100 plus snakes is actually very rare. <gasps> I'm rare. I do think you're very rare. Especially like with all the corn snakes, a hundred percent. Oh my god, dude! I'm like an idiot. Boas, corns, bull, Jesus! I got Asian colubrids too. I was gonna say Asian. I was about to say I'm like you. You cave have to finish your islands. You love cave geckos. I love cave geckos. They're like goth. We're leopard meant to be geckos. friends. Yeah, goth leopard, leopard geckos. They're like badass yeah. little demons, and I yeah, love them. They are way cool. I, I when I was like I'd say a kid. My first, like my first couple that I had were like the Gonosaurus blue eyes, like the very common ones. Yeah. Ones. Now they're not common at all, so it's no. fine. Well, this table is right. I had picked its geckos back in the day, and I bought. A, I bought should, a trio. They're like hot now, so you should have kept. I them. bought a trio for forty five dollars <laughs> off the table at show, just fifteen dollars each. Forty five. Now they're like two hundred bucks. Yeah, like selectively like, bred hybrid. <laughs> And they breed like crazy. You put two together, you'll have eggs for fucking years. Mm -hmm. They're rabbits. I'm I, like, I I do want some, but I I don't. No, you don't want them. I want them. I know. It's feeders. Yeah, kind of. For see, pictus, I am sure people have bred pictus geckos for feeders. Yeah, absolutely, they have. Yeah, like They're easier than green animals. So I, when I was like a little teeny tiny baby in high school, I had a, a, a fine snake, Ahitula. Yeah. And I killed it somehow. Uh, Fuck, it was wild. It was probably full of worms. I don't know. But I thought it was the coolest cool. thing ever, and I fed it a Knolls. And I'm like... Yeah, full parasites. Yeah, I killed it. So I'm like, I want that. I think they're hilarious. You can't they're feed some so of them cool. fish, and you can teach some of them to eat some stuff. But yeah, they, they're, they're really eat obligate lizard eaters. Yeah, so lizard I eaters. will do it for them. I'm I, a team player. I, I think vine snakes are very cool. But I think a lot of those animals, like those ones, are so high humidity that we're killing them in our – we can't keep the humidity consistently high enough for some of them. So you're saying I should move to Florida? Yes. Or make a rain chamber like Roy Stockwell did for his first ball python breeding ever in Canada. With I wish chamber? I got the picture still. I've, I've seen pictures of ball pythons breeding in like a rain chamber thing. They, they periscope in the rain, right, and they lock. That's kind of fun. Do you have, you have pictures of it? No, it was on an old forum, and the and all the I went through all the pictures. It's dead. It's long dead. I there's a lot of pictures from back then that I wish I had. Some oh. I'm happy are gone because they're, not, they're <laughs> gone. But there's some pictures from back then that I would love to have. I wonder if I can still contact him. I wonder if he's still around. I'll find out. All right, last question, or maybe like last ish topic. Will brought up the idea. That the triple double quad penta zeitgeist is already going to be too common <laughs> too soon. And then he talked about homozygosity in general. What are your I think about? we need to spread out again, yes, from all recessives. I agree to an extent with that. With testing, it's going to become really common. In five years, you'll have quads being, you know, the new triple, right? Right. Like, who. It's not even going to be hard to do because you have. We have tested. Well, so and you, will. And you can do a quad to a quad and make quads 100% heads and then so just breed them back together to make the 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 Pinta or whatever. Will bought quad het males. Two of them. He ended up buying brothers from Canova. He told everyone in Discord, so it's not like I'm. Well, so he, said, he said it on our live. Yeah, right? yeah. So there you're doing better. <laughs> But Sorry, he's going to breed that to like triple heads or double heads and then test for all the stuff, right? It has monsoon in it. I think it's monsoon, DG, something, something. Everything's got a test except for the monsoon right now. So his point right, is to so, sell And, and so things. is everyone else because they've already been doing it. Like there yeah. was, there's a penta. And it was on work that... market. It was eight grand for that male, that quad head male. The funny part is, is 10 years ago, nobody would want to buy that male. Five years ago, nobody would want to buy that male, especially for eight grand. 
Well, I'm pretty sure like the DG Xanthic Monsoon will be cool if it's alive, right? It's going to be alive. I think all Corys are alive. I should bug them. See which ones live. But so like the question is like, what is stage three in your opinion of the ball python zeitgeist? Because before we even finish like hitting a lot of doubles and stuff, we will have made a bunch of pintas and then all be like depressed and confused in about two years, is in my opinion. What do you mean like stage three? Uh the, the next zeitgeist. So like we had Kodom, Craze, Kodom I stacking. I, I think it's still... recessives, multi recessives. I think multi recessives are still gonna be there. I think Anthony, what's up? Hello, Anthony. We were talking about you, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I agreed with a lot of his sentiments about when he's selling stuff on Morph Market, right? If you don't get inquiries in a month, right? Figure something out. Right. Think about whether the price is right. Yeah. For, figure out why. Like at least consider what's going on. Anyway, um, I think we need to go towards. I think the projects are going to go towards curated doubles, cur cur like curated in a way. Like we know what genes do in a lot of combos, right? Mm -hmm. Like take Justin's pewter dreams of goal, right? He talked about it on his dreams of goal video a long time ago. He made the cinnamon dreams of goal and he knew it was all like a cinnamon and pied white out, right? So when he made the dreams of goal, he's like, oh, it stayed white for the most part. And in the same year, he paired for the pewter or whatever. And he's like, I figured what it'd be. He's like, this is not the project I want to be. We generally have an idea of what goes where. Like, we have an idea. So people need to curate a little bit more on, hey, this goes here, that goes there. Like, I work with Bongo. Mm -hmm. I don't like Bongo with the dark, like, cinnamon and black pastel. It kind of stripes it out too much. It's weird. It works kind of cool with mahogany, though. It looks cool with GHI. It does. It does. It actually looks really good with yellow belly and orange dream as well, but it actually looks good with pastel. It Bongo loves yellow, um, from my experience, and it likes some contrast too, right? So you're you're. Do you want an incomplete dominant to define your collection within various recessives, or would you rather have like a double define your relatively small collection? With various incomplete dominants that are your favorite. I do like how do you want to frame dominance. it in your mind? I like to I do it as with incomplete dominance, right? But Is you that can the do right it way. With, I don't think there's no right. I think there's no right or wrong way for this. To be fair, like if someone's gonna have a, a, a really high and tight a collection, they're gonna want to structure it in a way that. But dealer's makes choice. Sense. Dealer's what choice. dealer's choice? <laughs> okay. But my my prerogative on that is because especially for the smaller collection i have a youtube video about about this and i think i did release it because i film a lot of stuff and i never edit it mm -hmm. and one of them was about like how to how to smaller collection kind of like guidelines on how to buy stuff it should i believe in i don't want to work with stuff that doesn't really have a super and i mean that like i guess there's a super pin and a super leopard but it doesn't look any different yeah but super bongos wobble so like do you a little you bit like... but okay. like we'll see I've, I've Corey Woods has produced a few and I've seen them. They didn't wobble. I just don't know if like I'm a person that believes you have to see it to believe it. But we'll okay. see. But Bongo Bongo. I mean, it has a, a super that doesn't immediately die. So like Yeah, we're winning. We're beating good. Monsoon, right? <laughs> <laughs> but No, uh, there's some living monsoons. But I the Super Bongo looks less cool than the Super Cypress. But the Super Cypress does hundred percent. I know it's supposed to wobble, right? Worse than the bongo, so. I heard it was worse, but so, then I've I've seen people sell. You know, so Cypress spots are supposed to wobble. Yes. A decent amount, and some but, of them do, and some of them bongos, don't. So I don't know what the ratio is. You want to throw the wrench in this? People have said the bongo spot knows, even though they're supposed to be a lelic, are not a lelic. They have to be a lelic. Nope. That's right, what the who's... who produce it? <laughs> then it's not. Like then, so people are saying it, yeah. So they're saying the genetics don't work the way we say they are. So either it's not a Lee Lake and people were just confusing things and didn't prove it out enough. And my prerogative on that is how many test pairings have we done with it? Bongo specifically or Cypress with spot nose? Like how many have we done to really know? I feel like Cypress spot nose is like a lot. Because... Right. But it's like Bongo with Cypress. Have we produced enough of those supers to prove that it's 100% a Lee Lake? We say it is. I mean, people can keep trying, but like, it all you have to do is prove it with one of them to prove it's illegal with all of them. So I, I don't really. But care then people are saying that's it. not true. 
the people who say that bongo spawn is genetics not a work. work. It's, and it's not. The thing well, is, like, if, if there's a specific animal that's not acting the way it's supposed to, keep breeding it. But it's possibly a chimera. Like one, like it's 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 gonads, whichever ones is from a twin, which is not the visual homozygote. Right. So you're saying it could be a, go, uh, a chimera, or it's not that they misided it. They misided right. the animals. Which right. Is... I, I would like establish all those things are true. So... Like what's her face? That's rude. Deb, Northern Regis. The snake is a chimera. One ovary is a mystic crystal. And one of his is a Mojave That's super special. Cool. That's or something like that. Cool. <laughs> so like cool. the, the, that female will, will lay both kinds of eggs. So she has three genes in her babies. You know, cool. you know what I mean? Three yeah, possible. Yeah. That's very cool. But, but that I, one looks like a chimera on the outside too. So, I, but but I each just ovary think... is different. That, that is very cool. But I, I definitely think the zeitgeist is like, we're going to go back to, everything goes in cycles. Why are we not going to go back to codoms, right? I think people are going to use them. I think the next thing is using supers as the new recessive. So super asphalt is going to be treated more like a recessive. And I'm not saying it has to be asphalt, but that's a good example. So people right. are like Right like, now, a super asphalt is more expensive than a clown. Or a pipe. Yes, or... but you can get super asphalt breeders for six hundred bucks. Females. Right, but you can get clown breeders for, for five cents. I can't. I can't get anyone to buy a heck clown breeder proven breeder for one hundred fifty bucks. So people you don't like clown anymore. Are gonna like curate their collection around incomplete dominants that have supers, like you're doing? Do you think that's like a good strategy for people? We're trying to give people advice. So I think it's, good I think it's a good strategy. <laughs> if you have a smaller collection, now, excuse Bongo, for example, it, it exceptions every rule. I have Bongos. I like it, too. I would also own Calico if it came in a snake, too, because it's not going to be lethal, right? The Wobble isn't really, like, it's not soup spider to spider. They're not going to die. Um, but you could, like, Enchi is a good example, is you're going to make a different looking animal with Super Enchi than you will with Enchi, to a degree. Mm -hmm. And it kind of doubles up your collection, like your possibilities of making cool looking stuff without having to expand how many bins you have, right? That makes sense. Right, but it also floods your babies with the same look. It you ever, does. Like, you ever overproduce something on accident? You're like, damn, that male yeah, one so sucks. good. And then you're it trying sucks. to sell it. And you're like, I have 10 of the same thing. I have done that. It's like, <laughs> but at the same time is if you don't pair for like potentially having that, you could also end up with like nothing. Like you can't like, it's a gray line where you want to keep like in my video, I actually say to people, I'm like double up on your females for your production. If you want to make, it doesn't matter what it is. If you want to make like DG clowns, right? Buy three head, double head DG clowns mm -hmm. because there's a chance that one's not going to go the, like what's your odds on everything, right? Yeah, sure. You can end with like 19 of them or whatever amount. But if you don't like, you kind of like you have to play the odds to some level, right? Listen, I'm oh. all in on like volume on accident. And like, I mean, it, like I, I breed to hold back five for myself and five to sell. Yeah, right? maybe you that's can. how I pair and breed. Right. Like I want super GHI clown everything. Fuck. Yeah, they super breed. GHI. It's super cool. Yeah, and super GHI Kryptons and super GHI. Just I, all like, the super GHI. Right. So I have dozens of ghi combo heck clowns <laughs> well, that's my point you have a lot of ghi and yeah. you're going to at least keep making progress in all your all your projects because you right. have the animals there if you buy one and you're like i really like super ghi right. clown you could get nerfed for six years if she doesn't want to breed it right all so then your animal becomes um obsolete like your project becomes obsolete at least on a monetary thing and you have to move on Let's right, but am I am I going problem. to overdo G Super GHI by just being so interested in Super GHI? Will you overdo but but Bongo the, by just being no. too interested in Bongo? But that's the point of like where where everyone, all the big breeders say, breed what you like, right? You have to work on the project that you like. You I mean, I like be, other things too, but I definitely like GHI. But like, is that considered like, I don't know. I think GHI is actually an underrated thing. It had it's a heyday, kind of had like a, it, a price nerf all over the place. Like THI pies are nerfed, yeah, but THI think, clowns are nerfed. Again, I don't. I'd rather sell something, even if the price is down. I'd rather sell it like hotcakes than to sit on it forever. 
just because does the it sell like high. hotcakes though? There's been clowns sitting on work market with well, Tia Chai in them for a long time. I mean, are they worth a thousand bucks meals? Like babies? No. Tia Chai right. clowns are two hundred bucks on work market. They That's retail right yeah. now. Yeah. In the Canada, people are still trying to get a thousand. People are a little dumb. <laughs> that's my point is you price wrong like that's the accountability right ghi tree tri stripe you should do that i'm i'm doing i'm gonna it. do mahogany and I'm in. Tri stripe. you do that with hype okay and clown. i'm in you don't know how much like i like tri stripe clowns they're not like perfect or something no they're i just fine. think it's a cool foundation they're gonna make cool stuff I right think. but i already have like a make an absolute shit ton of because clown stuff because i do and so I, I might as well try stripe them. right i wonder if leopard Tri clown are gonna look cooler because leopard tri looks really cool. It's a fucking sea of possibility, brother. We can do what we want. That's the point, and then we'll charge twenty thousand dollars again. <laughs> no, because it's from me or or you. It'll never be that expensive. But like, it'll be seven. Who cares? Because you'll be able to sell it. <laughs> That's my point. Because it'll be. I'd rather sell it. if it sells yeah. for five hundred bucks. Cool. Right. That's just all be, I give. A just because about. it's uncommon or rare. It doesn't mean there's truly a price crease, right? It just has to, you know, do something else. Mm -hmm. Super GHI everything. I agree with that comment. Yeah, I, uh, I, I mean, it, and it doesn't matter what it is as long as you're like having fun and you're doing a good time. But like, I think I have a hundred and twenty or so like hold back or breedable females. That's probably too many. Let's be honest. Ball pythons only. <laughs> Yeah, you are ignoring all their species right now, but then I'm like, how does anybody hit anything if they don't have 120 of them? Well, like me, you just miss and then you sell off your and you cry and, and you just go and buy cry and move on to another one. I was trying to hit a savannah <laughs> ghost forever, and I could never hit it. I just like all the animals went from that product. So I couldn't get the females anymore. I'm like, Sorry, nope, you're all gone. I'll buy one of these one day for 400, like 40 bucks, 400 bucks a time. Like I'll buy one of these one day. My friend told me she's like, she asked me, she's like, if you hit a Savannah Ghost, this is like two years ago. She's like, if you finally hit one, what are you gonna do? I'm Aren't like, they like two hundred dollars now? Yeah, yeah. But okay. I just want to really hit this year. I, I made all the all the stuff right because I couldn't find the ingredients in Canada and I didn't want to import a three hundred dollars snake for cost. Oh, right. So I was like, I'll just make. I have the ingredients. I said to make them all, and like individually stuff. So I, my friend's like, what would you do with it? I'm like, well, they're not worth anything. So I was like, I don't know, take some pictures and then sell it. I was like, what else am I gonna do? Just like, cool, I got this. Like, this thing's super cool. And then that didn't like, like inspire you to go. I don't know, make Savannah go strike right or something. Like, you didn't want to keep the female to like make heads off. No, of she had pastel, later. and I was like, no, I don't want pastel. Okay, I want pastel. To look looks good in try though. It's pastel, Mojave, cinnamon, head hypo. Originally, when she hashed, I thought she was hypo, but she was only a hat because she was so bright mm. she's actually very greenish and stuff she looked very cool but i got rid of her a few years ago <sighs> moving it up Mojave hard. too too much bell and too much pastel i like mojave though i do mojave is better than lesser i always believed it or butter sorry i changed the name to butter <laughs> either name's fine i i Price think range is the same so the number name can be interchangeable in my opinion right i think uh Everything is fine if someone is an advocate for it. It's just right now there's so much like slop in the the zeitgeist, like people talking what people want. People buy snakes they don't even really want because they need like the value. You know, it's just it, it fucking sucks, r really. That part we'll see, sucks. We'll see more by Full Tinley, I think, on like where the market is. Um like where things are. I think we're going to see an uptick in demand and a uh, supply is going to drop from what it is. Over Especially because babies, right? Because everyone always wants babies. Wholesalers so, only want babies. And if yeah. people are producing less, there's going to be a demand for it. So we were doing good and dropping big numbers off the wharf market every day, like hundreds of ball pythons. But we yeah. started to slow down again, and I'm, like, stressing out a little bit. Because, because we... March 1st is tomorrow, and there'll be more auctions. Don't worry. Well, I want even more. What, because I want them to get sold before they're too big to be, like, good to sell. Because that's number? our problem, is we have a bunch of 2022 stuff floating around shows. A bunch of... 2022 still? And they're probably, like, what, 300 grams? 
Yeah, but they're that's old. The they're all old. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants well, them. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. That's why we, we so somebody stuff. was talking about earlier Nobody saying like wants. trying to push stuff out, it, it goes to price drops. But the thing is, when you've got adults or like sub adults at 2022s and it's 2024, the price drop is already going to happen anyway because now you're sitting on something that you really don't want. Right. And now you're like, I've been feeding this thing for two years. Just get out of my house or my right. facility, whatever. And you so never price, even... like, so people say, oh, you're causing a price drop because you're trying to push it out for before next year. I'm like, but if it's not selling, it's going to drop price anyway. Like, it's not just me. Right. Nobody wants it at There's a, any price. Like you talked about it when you and I had a chat yesterday about DG, right? You don't need to drop DG females from $400 to $200 during Morph Madness. $400 right. was steadily selling. If everything's steadily selling, that's fine. Just you have to sit on your inventory a little bit, right? Right. If Put nobody's talking to you, that's not selling. If nobody's talking to you, you're the only person who thinks it's worth this much. Right. So if you don't want to keep it and breed it yourself, yeah. and you don't want to sort of concentrate in your collection, that's a sign that you shouldn't be making that pairing anymore. You need to upgrade that male something because not right. even a pet happy pet person at a show wants some of the shit that's going to these shows. And I've been to shows, so I fucking know. But there are right. old ass 2022s that are twenty dollars at my shows. Right. Nobody wants them. They're, they're too big now. So. And the thing is, is that they're totally fine to keep. And to be fair, if they're females, you just feed them normally, and they'll get to whatever, right? Yes, I heard you can buy extra auctions soon, but they're still not going to be. You're not going to have Will Banks buy like a hundred of them, right? I hope not. <laughs> so. I hope not right, but either. People because... need to like realize that they can't breed fuck all whatever, even if they really like it, because it's not fair to the animals to keep them for two years, not selling them, barely feeding them to keep them saleable in size. Right. Either. So if you don't have a wholesale outlet, you don't get permission to just make a bunch of shit. <laughs> right? Is 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 can't those things both still be true at the same yeah, time? More than one thing can be true. I as right. I said, I'm like people trying to think things black and white, like only this is the cause of something. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer that it could be anything. Like there's so many variables, right? And everything's individual to the breeder if we're talking about breeders, right? We go back to where are you on a scale? Maybe you and your family have 10, you and your kids have 10 snakes and you want to make some cool stuff. I don't care if you want to make bells mm -hmm. and you have Mojaves and Lessers. Hopefully you don't think you're going to get $200 for more for Lessers because they're all more market for 200 bucks. You realize they're $50 animals and blow them out. Even um, for bells. Bells also. are, you know, 250 bucks. Yeah, I think I think people look at morph market prices and think that that's a reflection of their what will be their show prices or no. what price that they can command even six months from now. <laughs> I, I there's a lot of like fantasies here, and I think people like eight years ago I was selling bells for like two fifty. People were like, "You're crazy! They're five hundred dollars." I was like, "They're not." I was like, "You're lying to yourself." If right. wholesalers are buying them. That means big breeders are not getting good money for them and they're staying on them too long. So they're wholesaling them. If they're wholesale, then the the market value is on what you think. Right. So anything that a, that a, if it's a large is, rat, Daniel, you can definitely feed your snake once a month. Right. Right. I mean, you can feed a baby once a month too. I don't care. It's just like, what are we doing that like, it's partially like the panda's fault. People maybe like misassigned the amount of demand they thought was going to happen coming into 2022 because they're like 21 I mean, was fire. Breeder females were like breeder female pines were like three grand. Right now they're that was not bucks. that was not sustainable. <laughs> Clown females were two grand. That's not sustainable. Right, but how without being a bitch and like hurting people's feelings, do we share the correct message to like new breeders? Like, don't get out of the hobby, but try to pair stuff that is within your price range but it will sell because a lot of the stuff that was told to people like breed pides breed bells breed albinos yeah. breed bananas that shit is flooded as fuck in my market so i've taken pides to shows for 150 dollars and you can't sell them can't sell them uh, how do you calls. nicely say it maybe you just can't say nicely maybe you have to be yeah, honest me. and say look you say it nicer you just well it's not really nice. You can say politely, respectfully. Oh. I don't know. Nice. I don't know if it's nice. Just to be like, I think he's going to be straightforward. Be like, look, there's a saturation to these animals at the show. 
you need to just sell them. You right, don't and maybe take them at home. other shows there isn't them. that saturation. But like, right, but you're not a breeder there. You're not a, there. A lot of the advice online might have even been okay pre-Panda, but in a post-Panda world. Uh, the nice way to say, like, well, you said it once uh, on one of your podcasts about circling the wagon. That's probably a nice mm-hmm. way of saying it. Circling the wagon, kind of protect yourself. Um, right, don't be stuck collection. with a bunch of pet liability. If, if you need to sell albinos for fifty dollars, so that way you can feed the rest of the collection, just do that. Like, right. don't worry about the money. If they say, "Oh, I've already put seventy dollars of food in it," well, fifty dollars is still better. Twenty dollars loss is better than a hundred dollar loss. If you sit on it for six more months, right? So people need to know that they have permission to do auctions. So because like there's 2022s aren't getting any fresher. It's funny you say that because the Canadian auctions have 16 ball pythons for sale today on Morph Market. Like all want, of Canadian Canada's listings. Morph Market. Yeah, ball pythons are 16. 16, one six. So you talk about population density. By the metrics of Morph Market, we are so scattered and it's not just the pop like everyone tells me, oh, just the population. We don't have the size of the Americans. I'm like, mm-hmm. that is absolutely true to an extent but there's still other reasons why we're not doing this stuff like why and it, it was will that put up his one of his he put up a pastel hurricane double head g-stripe DJ was that to payment. encourage other canadians to put stuff up well i think that... he just wanted to try it and see what happened and then okay. all of a sudden canadians felt it was they got the permission jp jordan he put them up right after and it doesn't matter what they put up it was just so you're like I a Canadian voting block where you guys all work together in some sort of cabal. <laughs> they sh- I don't know. I'm not a part of it if that's true. Dang it. You didn't get the invite to the Canadian maple syrup No, it's probably because I, I would tell everyone, be like, you guys are stupid. I'm just pricing what I want because I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. I'm not even in your world. Like, Corey, man, you're dealing with monsoons and sunset hypos. I got fucking bongos. <laughs> I got bongos, that clown. Bongo double heads, hypo clown. Come on. I still work with hypo for God's sake. Corey works with Hypo. Yes, he does. I got Hypo mm-hmm. from him. Yeah, I bought Hypo from him this year. <sighs> I don't know. It, it's it's really hard because like I, I'm on I'm on I'm on everybody's side here. I'm on team. We should breed less ball pythons because it's not ethical to breed this many. I'm on team. We should breed more ball pythons because they're like a pretty good pet. I'm on team. If we breed less, prices would be better and more stable. But if we don't breed more, then Hypothetically, you fall you're not behind. Have more people come in, but you're not going to have more people come in, right? Because the prices are too high. When people say, so when people talk about saturation, here's a my view of it. Like there's 41,713 snakes, ball pythons in US Canada right now in Morph Market, which is down, right? Which has gone down like a thousand a month for the last little bit. For yeah, it's pretty, like, especially versus last year. We are, yeah, yeah. We've really, we've hovered there. I don't know how many are like, outliers of like who didn't mark sold who didn't do this that or the other thing right hmm. but what like everyone says oh it's saturated but there's a lot of markets that we that aren't posted on more market that are just as saturated there's a reason why you like nobody wants corn snakes but there's a lot of corn there are a lot of corn snakes people producing corn snakes right it's because there are shops that produce there are shops. fifty thousand corn yeah. snakes a year to but, sell to petco exclusively but, but that's like, my point. that means like the there's total populations of corn snakes in the country is really high Right. And my point is, like, everyone says, oh, both of them saturated. I'm like, there's a lot of saturation. People just don't talk. It's not as concentrated. Like, you don't see the numbers as much. And it's, and my point is, that it's never going to be everyone's going to put a, a snake on Morph Market. And then in three weeks, it's going to be off Morph Market. It's not going to be zero to one every time. Like, right. The, the maybe number... 40,000 isn't the right number. But what is the right number of consistent inventory on the market? Right, that number could stay forty thousand. The question right. is, like, are, is that forty thousand desirable animals that will have a successful placement in a, in a pet or breeder home? And now, I think some of the animals on there are not. Agreed, but that's something we. That's not. That's like, where I'm worried that's about. Always gonna the be, saturation. That was always a thing, though. <laughs> I know, but what do we do about it? I don't know what you can do about it. You just gotta hope that better people stop treating animals like pieces of shit, and just do better for themselves. But I've always, I came to the conclusion many years ago that I treat my animals with the best care I can give them. I love my animals. I feed them well. I love my snakes. I've been keeping snakes since I was a kid and that's never going to change. And 
for me, but I'm like, once they leave my hands, I feel bad when I sell a breeder female because I'm like, you've been a part of my house for eight years and I I love you. You don't give a shit about me, but you know, I, I hope that they live a good life, right? Um, right. Yeah, I it, a lot of this is like dumb navel gazing stuff, but like you, if you're gonna breed ball pythons, you have to look at the the situation on the ground, which is there are a lot of some kinds of ball pythons, yes. maybe too many, and they should have been wholesaled strictly to a wholesaler when they were pet only. Agreed. And they should and never you, have gone into the market as like a... To protect against that, people have to stop trying to get every dollar out of every snake they produce. That's correct. I think that, that is would on save both though. <laughs> When we talk about oh they should have wholesaled sooner, that's because people are trying to get two fifty out of a banana male when it should be sold for fifty bucks to a pet store. Why can't we fix the morph markets wholesale section? What do you mean? So What's right the, now it's whoa. like a sale. Like Gosh, if you buy five, you get thirty percent off. It should have been lots that were dirt cheap, twenty dollars a head, fifteen dollars a head. I think the wholesale section should just be deleted. Right, but I want wholesalers to buy real wholesale from people who know the real wholesale price. Yeah, not... but they're but they're not on more. Those wholesalers are not more market. I know, but I want them to be. Sure, but then you'd have to do it simple, something different. I don't know. I know. Like but what happened section... now is just a different version of a sale. Function. What what I don't like about it is that it's you're you're essentially seeing that someone's willing to take less money. Oh, you buy three animals, but you get them for a stupid price. Right, it's right? the buddy price reveal. Right, right. And I'm like, I don't think that should have been <laughs> I don't think that should have been done. Right, it fucked it up. And yeah, I think it fucked it up for people. I, I think it was a bad not a bad feature, just execute it incorrectly. Now, I am of the opinion that dairy and the morph market aren't ab like above making mistakes and maybe they thought it would work a little better, but now they should go back to the drawing, but it's been out long enough to say, did this really work? Like do animals sell at the wholesale price off of the wholesale Right, how, how frequently. I, I know Darian, I, I, I believe in much about Morph Market as a whole that they've released the deal section, the auction section, and the wholesales. They're trying to sell more snakes for people. Mm -hmm. That is, in my opinion, a good thing. We just need to tweak things every now and then. I don't want to, like, people talk about shitting on things, right? Uh, I meant fifty dollars. Yeah, they'll sell for over a hundred dollars. I get asked for bananas and banana pies all day long from pet store wholesalers. They're like, "Do you have this?" I'm like, "I don't breed pie at all. I don't own it. I don't own banana anymore either. I sold my last one." Right, but a banana on Morph Market is as cheap as fifty dollars already. Yeah, males are fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah, so like, well, yeah, it should sell. You in sell a pet store, for, for hundred bucks though. Right, but it, so if you sold it to, for Market. twenty or something to the pet store, fifteen, because you didn't want to retail ten of them. It makes sense because they're only they, they they bought them out at like fifty a hundred bucks. Yeah, on more they'll, they'll buy them for twenty five dollars. The pet stores or fifty bucks, right? And then I'm saying if the wholesale section could go back to being real wholesale, like actual I lots, agree. thirty I lots, agree. fifty lots, real real wholesale. And you have right. to have an EIN. You have to be like a real wholesale buyer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to show some type of license to get on that. I, I think it should and be a separate section volume, away from it. You'll trade not like a price point to get volume, like a volume discount, like the way wholesale well, is supposed to be instead so of Darian, like. <laughs> I don't think Morph Market, I see Darian, but it's Morph Market because he has other business too. But I think Morph Market does it like the best way that could work is if you're behind closed doors and like somehow they have a, a middleman that because. It's supposed to make sales for you or I who might have less animals to wholesale. We don't have 100 pastels to sell. But right. collectively on Morph Market, you can find 100 pastels for $15 a head. Right. So it made sense kind of. But nobody made them cheap enough to make it make sense. Sure. But my point about it was, A, it doesn't make sense. But let's assume they are. How are you going to collect five pastels from me, from you, from you know 20 people to make the 100? You need to – Morph Market would need to middleman – we ship them all out, then they pay everyone kind of thing. Right. I, there's no good – like the way they did it is not I think it's great, just really but I, maybe there's too many ways to do it. I, I think just, it's just like, clunky. Yeah. Like if you go to Fauna right now, you can see ball python lots. Sometimes they're 5, sometimes they're 10, sometimes they're 15. So a lot of times they're too big technically. They'll be 200 grams or something. Yeah. 200 grams. But because they're – 
you know, a, a, a cheap and with a cheap price, right? Somebody like a jobber or somebody, maybe not even a pet store, buys it and flips them. So that is what it is. That's just what I thought this was going to be. Five, 10, 15 cheap. I thought so too, price. but it wasn't. It didn't turn out the way I thought it was. I thought it was going to be the way you're talking about it. Like yeah. my, I'll be honest, my single gene animals are $25 to pet stores. My doubles are like 40 like I like maybe they're fifty, but like generally speaking, all common. Did they game, give you like a special price for banana or GHI or something, something that it. looks weird? Bells, I'll get it. Cause I asked for it. I'm like, hey, bells are a hundred dollars or hundred and fifty. Like they are higher premium, right? Cause I know they're gonna sell really fast, and the pet store is gonna get four or five hundred dollars for them, right? Bananas, mm -hmm. I still sell pretty cheap, but they might go for fifty at the wholesaler. But also, they're all males, right? Do you get them in money or do you get store credit? Uh, one of them I get, one of the stores I get cash. There's only two I mainly do right now. One gives me cash, one does store credit. And how many do you wholesale a year? Uh, to each one? I mean, just in general? I don't know. It varies from like 10 to 30. Okay. Yeah, that's not like, too bad. Know, like but a I, lot of my stuff goes. And I could make 50 wholesalable animals right away <laughs> like, yeah you know well, what I mean? so i've talked to people that are breeders and they've been trying to sell their collections because they again life changed and they want to move overseas they couldn't take their snakes that's fine and i was like you ever done wholesale i'm like i could probably get you a wholesale deal and they're like i've never done this and i'm like oh and i get really skittish i'm like well we can have a talk about this because i'm like you're not gonna like the prices you're about to be offered your mm -hmm. lavender hep pied male is 50 bucks at best it's like 25 bucks because the hep pie doesn't matter Mm -hmm. And the lavender is just an albino, like it's cool albino, but it's like twenty five dollars, right? Thirty bucks at a wholesaler, mm -hmm. and it's like I feel bad because you're about to get like you're gonna be offended, and everyone who's never dealt with wholesale or never seen a wholesale list gets really offended when they hear the prices, right? Because they don't realize that that's what re retail that's is sort of like a different price. <laughs> it's a different world, and right. The other and the other thing is like. The real price you're getting is the empty bin and the headache of moving a dozen animals. Right. There's 12 animals I don't have to feed anymore. And if you're smart, and I will say if you're smart, if you know it's a wholesale animal, as soon as it hatches out of the egg, you are contacting wholesalers, either you're finding new connections or your old ones, and trying to get it sold before it even has its first shed. You don't have to move it out. Some people like to have it feeding before you do that. But mm -hmm. you want it kind of solidified that you're already trying to, like, it, sales don't happen overnight. It's not COVID anymore, right? So, or instantaneously. So, like, you have to start start that conversation sooner than later. Right. But I think, it, let me just, this is, like, personal experience. I think it's hard to, to know what you need a wholesale before you do it. Because, like, yes, it's true. there was a time where you could, like, extract some value out of, like, a pastel inchy head clown because you can the, take it to a show and sell it for 60 bucks so, so like what i started doing kind of over so i agree with you so what i started doing was i want this shit i start talking to the wholesale like some stuff i know what i'm just going to wholesale right anything that's normal is going to be wholesale right that one's um, easier all, all virtual single gene males are all going to be wholesaled right mm -hmm. uh so you start there you start with those things but the stuff you're questioning like oh maybe this female might sell retail i kind of will like wait for shed a meal take a picture post it somewhere for sale publicly and then if it does, like whoever buys it first, the wholesaler or the retail, and that's who gets it. And I just don't worry about it sitting on it, right? Because the okay. wholesaler doesn't want everything. Is that like a co codom combo female or is that like a breeding female? Codom female. Combo. Like who's okay. what it be, combo female or like double head. It, it just depends on what it is, right? <sighs> like I wholesaled a bunch of bongo stuff even in 2022 and I, I didn't say with their heads for anything I'm like this is a really cool like pastel leopard bongo male people are like that's you know worth 500 dollars. i'm like yeah well i wholesaled it for like 125 bucks or 150 is bucks. it worth 500 dollars? maybe in 2022 okay yeah i don't know what's worth anything's worth anymore but like i got 150 bucks because it got sold as a really cool pet to someone else right and i'm like that's fine fine by me yeah, life's hard. I don't have any of the right answers. I just know, like, I've been stuck with stuff that I used to be able to retail because I do enough shows, technically. And now I'm like, you're right. It's unretailable 
now, but I didn't know that. Now it's 400 grams. Right. Like me. Right. So that part is where you're kind of stuck. And that part, you just have to take a loss and be like, I need this out. Right. That's why you auction it right away. It doesn't matter. $20. Yeah. Auction. And that's, or I don't know if you're like, do you do trades? I will do anything. Yeah. I will turn tricks on the corner to sell some <laughs> of these fucking snakes. <laughs> don't think that's true. You it know might what? not it be with, true technically, tell, but it's tell, true tell in Warren spirit. Booth you're going to start sending him stuff. Like, does, he doesn't have snake ears, right? No, he said he doesn't have snake ears. They so start sending him his stuff. Like, here you go. Here. You, he wants to pay for testing for random stuff. He doesn't. because I, I would give thing. it to some happy kid somewhere. Yeah. You know, as long I as it has a cage, it's not going to be tortured. I, yeah. I literally don't care, and I know a lot of people agree with me with that plan. But like, if it's free and you give it away to show, you're often con consigning it to like a terrific death. Because show people are poor and they can barely afford or read, and you're like, what the fuck is this population of humans here? But this, is, but that's why I do not like dealing with pet people. As much as I need, we need them to come in. I'm like, I don't want to deal with these questions anymore. Right, but somebody needs. I go, like pet people. They're the fine. I just don't like poor pet people, which sounds no, poor. Pet people should just not be buying animals. But I right, like the they pet can't store afford that. anything. They just can't let afford the pet store people do that. Just they let can't the pet afford store their kids. Snakes are not cheap to set up. Like they are if you go really cheap. Like. Type of, like a Rubbermaid, paper towels, use something. Right, it, it could be very reasonable, and they could grow into the hobby, right? Yeah, but they. But they, but some people struggle even with that. My like, my concern about that is like, can they afford to even feed this thing regularly? No, probably not. And that's where I'm like, it's a three dollar meal a week, or like bi weekly if you want to be slow. It's like that's crazy. You can't afford three dollars a week or three dollars every other week. Right. That, so like, I'm like, you should just not own this. Right. This is true for many kinds of animals, too, by the way. It's yes, like, this is not a snake or ball I, I asked Corey Woods once. I was like, bro, you bred, like, your Leon Burgers. I was like, are all pet, are all animal people just, like, crazy and shitty for buying stuff? And he was like, yeah, yeah, they're all shitty. Charlie's here. What's up, Charlie? Charlie. Oh, yeah, animal. Charlie got DG and. Yeah, exactly, BPI. right? Mm, BPI, Charlie's right? doing it. Charlie, I know people that were waiting for him to get the test for DG, and they already got sheds waiting for Charlie. So, well, there's one. <laughs> yeah, I have like, I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm just like proceeding as as it, like an idiot. Like I have like double DG pied stuff, and I'm just I'm just gonna test it. I, like they're not worth anything. The females aren't worth anything, right? They're worth like a hundred bucks. Maybe. What double heads? <laughs> yeah, double heads. But I'm just gonna do it because I, mean, if I you like keep throw... them. Right. It's only well. Let's say that if they if I guess that's a question. Should you if you know something's not worth buying, should you keep it? <laughs> it depends. That, that depends uh, on the projects, right? Yeah. Can you buy a better version on the market now? You, if for DG Pi, you probably can. Like you could buy an Enchi mm -hmm. double hat, then probably sell that and, and buy that instead. Right, but once I like spend all the money on testing them, I'll be then you're just keeping. That's fine. To, to be fair, that's fine too. You just then need to change your plans in a way to have. I just a need to get out of DG Pied. It's my problem. We'll just like, have one in sale. For, plus, I had, I had clown. It was only five grand, but it also came with pastel. And you know, I don't know if you're a pastel hater. That actually I, went. I, actually, you want to talk about? It? He said that that went to someone in Canada, and who? they paid U.S. Oh, okay. The Will snake. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been like in a project and like kind of in it, but not really? Yeah, pied. And then I got out of it. I was That's halfway me. into pied twice and I got out of it. I was like, you know what? I really don't like, I just don't have the passion for this gene. It's cool. I love all the morphs out there. Some I just have higher on my preferred list than others. I don't like to shit on people's projects. I try not mm -hmm. to really hard. Like people like, ah, oh, Sunset's garbage. And I'm like, it looks cool, man. I like Sunset, but I'm like, it's cool. If people like Ultramel versus Monarch, I'm like, why can't we just like both? People <sighs> like Bananas, I'm like, that's cool, man. That's your thing. It's not mine. I'm just not buying from you. That's fine. I think that's the cool. only time people are really mad at something is if, like, the amount of money that's, like, investment money in the hobby is actually not infinite, right? There's almost infinite pet money, kind of, in some ways, but, like, 
So if someone spends five thousand dollars on a size head combo, they're not investing big in monsoon combos. Probably not always. Some people are doing both, but like, right because they spent their five grand on sunset. Right. So yeah. in some ways, negging a project that you're not in or don't like that much to bring it to let it fall down to like five hundred dollars, which nobody really cares either way. Anyway, it, it, there's some sort of. But we talk about the health of the market, right? So <laughs> if we're always constantly shitting on things, like is that not as much as we say it doesn't affect things? human psychology doesn't work that way if you keep hearing enough negative stuff about it you can easily build up a subconscious uh um but maybe that's what people want it. no that's true they, they well want to neg that. sunset if they are in totally I, I get that i just some don't think other should, project. I, I think those people need to shut their mouths is my point and stop doing that i think sunset is why do you want someone of... to shit on your project in the same way right and but they do also it. yeah i think it's i i think it's all dumb like, like i think I everyone's dumb for doing it but isn't it just natural? They, like people shit on any of those people football just, teams. I, you know, like you're football that's teams. different though. You're not financially invested in the same way, right? Maybe. You just spend ten grand. It's yeah, but you just spend ten grand, and the premise of like them doing well is going to cost you your retirement. <laughs> it's confusing. Mm. I'm not sure if it's morally reprehensible to shit on specific morphs i think it's probably fine i think it's fine to constructively criticize and be like well sunset tends to brown out i'm and a like, mean negative person things. i would like to shit on some morphs sometimes <laughs> i try not to in private i might but i try not to ever publicly i just I don't, think, want, I don't want to be rude to someone else's passion right because you're kind of shitting on their passion too what about what if it's bad for the like, animal like if they're breeding desert yeah. Yeah. You want to shit on like, desert people's passion? I would, or... I would shit on desert people and be like, "Why are you bringing that?" Because all the females are useless. You're I know. Just literally, just killing them. Or breed on caramel people's passion. Breeding, you shouldn't breed giants. Same thing, right? All over tick people. Stop breeding. Right, but that's you're shitting on their passion. You're a negative person. Yeah, hey man. Their their passion kills people. So, and there's no way you can't Does prove it has it. Kill people? It has. Not yet. <laughs> A ball python has not killed anyone yet. I think so. Like I am less mad at sunset now that it's fifteen hundred dollars. I a bad I, that, that's no because I know a lot of people who think that way because the price is high and they can't get to it, so they're they're shitting on it. Not maybe not directly trying to lower the price, but they turn around on it and they buy it. Will talked about this one time. He didn't say names, but him and I were joking about it. He's like, people will say things about projects, and then like two years later, they're knocking on your door trying to buy it. They're like, oh, this sucks, blah, blah, blah. Then, like, two years, like, hey, man, you got some of this? And is that because they were true. trying to neg it to bring it down? Or is it just, like, a weird subconscious thing where, like, they don't think it's worth it? I, I, I think it could be both. Okay. Like, it could definitely be subconscious. Because I've definitely said that. Like, if Sunset was $500, I would buy one just to, like, me mess around well, with it. Well, that's different. You just don't value it on the same tier as a $10,000 exactly. risk. And that's, in my opinion, that's totally fine. That's not really shitting on it. That's just saying, Hey, I, well, I, it does I look personally like value sometimes. something. I personally value TriStripe or GHI ahead of it, right? You'd spend that money there. Exactly. And to me, that's just constructive discussion or, or criticism. And you're just not actively saying, that's a shit animal. Why would you even breed this or buy it? You're just saying, I just like this. I may have used better. colorful language. Sure. Fair. But we. we no, like, I think sunsets have shown themselves to be like relatively versatile. And sometimes show off a little bit, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like be but, be something only Sunset can be, and so, that's what I'm interested in. Sunset for, you know, I it's just like I like blue blue ass looking snakes. So yeah. I like hypo snakes. So, so speaking of that's like my projects, number one. Sunset is like the opposite of that. So like buying into projects, where would you buy a Zakenzie? <laughs> I would buy a super zebra. Or sorry, a super. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. A super striker. A super McKenzie. A super and read it to yeah. hypo, true ghost or something, and just yeah. wait until the genetic tests roll in. That's what yeah. I would buy. I wouldn't yeah. buy hats though because it's always in like Inchy and Spark and shit, and they might be misiding it. So you. Yeah, there's a lot of misid stuff on Morph Market. Well, people, because money's attached to it. This is definitely a money thing, and sometimes passion where we want to. Um we want to see what we want to see, right? We're going to see. So you're trying to ID something you're like, ah, I really want this to be this. I'm really hoping to hit this combo. And you kind of, you kind of see what you want to see, right? You'll kind you of think people like, see what they want to see in a project. They otherwise 
well not a project right? but like in a combo they hatch out right let's say you're really right. aiming for like yellow belly like we're talking about spark or enchi zebra right Right, they'll make it's up. Like, it's oh, it's for an hats, spark. Right? It's like yeah. a reducer yeah. bander. <laughs> right, that's combo my point. Anyway. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. oh, they just want to see it, right? I mean, that's what's wrong with lace. It's not because lace wasn't cool. It's because it's extremely difficult to ID in the single yeah. gene form. That's it basically why... also should be treated like a recessive. That's why it yes. never took off. Yes. Well, that's what people... Well, there's a lot more to project in my opinion, than just by saying, way. hey, I got a new gene, and then... Give me ten thousand dollars. That's how a lot of people operate. Not everything, not everything is worthy of ten thousand dollar price tag. It has right. to be significant. Lace didn't look different enough from a normal to really command ten thousand dollars off the hop. And then what you said, it's very hard to ID. So people can just say a really nice normal. People was miss all lace. laces all the time. Yeah, and I agree with you. So it made it hard to ID. So it takes a while to. But that's so why I think people release. can neg a morph. It's because they're mad at it for fucking them at some point. Sure, whatever, that's a little right? different. If you want to say because you got fucked by it, well, that's that's kind of thing. I know someone that got out in Canada essentially because they put all their money into desert, and then the bad news came out, and then you know half their collections worth. Right. That. So so you could be mad. I don't know. You could be mad at Sunset because you bought into Sunset at, when it was a baby and you thought it was good. It was $10,000 and then it browned out so bad. You were disappointed in it as like yeah. a but then like I would a, hold you, But then I would hold you accountable and be like, you shouldn't be that disappointed. You got to work it out and make it better. You think? You got to. Well, everything's a project now, right? You can't just sit on one end and be like, well, this is all I'm ever going to do is just pure Sunsets. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Like, they maybe didn't put the effort in. But let's say you bought, I don't know. I'm, I'm making fun of Sunset, but Sunset is fine. We just, 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 like, I bought a stranger. I could be yeah. mad at stranger technically because I bought a female. And now that many males are $500, I could just go buy a male for $500 and yeah. probably make more money off of that male before that female even. That's like dollar cost averaging, right? Because now you're dollar cost averaging your stranger project. Right. But I could be so mad at stranger. I could start to sit on shit on stranger. I'm not that. I think still think stranger's weird I and think unique. Super cool. Uh, he's in here. Morphic, Morphic Exotics. I don't know. It's Josh. He proves a really cool stranger heck clown combo female. Mm -hmm. If, I don't know if it's on his IG, but he should post it. And I would say go there and look at it after this. More fake socks? I don't know. But he produced, like, Stranger makes really cool combos. Right. And sometimes they're not it's, cool, but a lot of times they're they're. Unique. We're still trying to figure they that look out, look like right? Stranger is it. Yeah, yeah. But this his doesn't really look it, but, like, you you got to figure stuff out, right? We have to figure stuff out. Stranger's still being figured out. All right. Okay. Opinion. Here's a question. What if somebody buys a zebra? Never gets a chance to breed it. It comes out it's Mackenzie. Are they allowed to be mad at Mackenzie or Zebra because you know the price equalizes? I don't I don't think I don't think it's gonna equalize. I don't think it matters. I think people are still gonna buy Zebra for a premium because they want the zebra name. I don't think people should do I don't that. think zebra's gonna drop over price to a five hundred dollar snake. Are you sure? I don't think so. We haven't seen it happen yet. What about when they are like? Do you think they'll suppress the? Do you think a test would be the knowledge would be suppressed because the price is be the first time the price difference would be so drastic between the two? Right. When the like, hurricane trick wasn't right. It wasn't was very close. It was close enough that it didn't yeah. matter. Do you think when hurricane first came out though, if someone had done it, they would have suppressed the test earlier? Well, people have done shady things already, so yes. Considering that so much shady things happen in this industry, yes. So then someone, I guess my question is like, people tell you that you should breed stuff because you like it, blah, 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 which is true. But you also breed it because it has a, a certain price point well, that it will confer a certain price point benefit to its offspring. Well, people like things because there's a bit of price tag to it, right? It's why like localities people like because there's a price, there's a, there's like, an elitist feeling to be able to afford that snake or work with something. Right. So if your snake got nerfed, you're allowed to be mad at it. I think in my opinion, like, if you're like, sure, you can be mad at it, but it doesn't mean it's shit all over it. You can just be mad. <laughs> like, your I... feelings are, your feelings shouldn't affect the market. Fuck you for doing that. Mm. I don't care. Shouldn't they affect the market? Because you are the market. 
Isn't that the whole point? Maybe, but like, what are you upset about? In the sense of like, if zebra, uh, if you bought zebra for ten, if you bought zebra for ten, okay, well, okay, let's, I'll, go I'll, I'll, let's go to monster okay, because okay. it's right there right now, right? If you spent seven grand on it, and then twenty twenty four, they all drop to three thousand. Like, I would be mad at it a little bit. I probably like, wouldn't get out, but I'd probably be mad at it. Right, that is okay. I think you're you only very, lock in your loss when you sell. When you right? sell out, right? That's like stocks. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Because even at three thousand dollars, you're still gonna make you make back your money. It's not that far of a drop. Like, right, not and you have the money. animals to breed for the rest of your life. And right? I think more important, yeah, that's the part that people forget. You could breed it for seven years, but you can still be mad at it. I think the part of the problem is you should be mad at the seller who possibly knew the price was dropped and tried to sucker price you. I'd be that more is mad a at dangerous the statement, price. sir. <laughs> that is a. It doesn't matter if it's dangerous or because not. Because then the but, seller has to like pre-adjust. Well, they don't have to pre-adjust. It's like a but, futures market for ball pythons. Is but at the same time, is where, at the same time, at the same time, it's like, what price drop do you get mad at, right? What's a normal price drop? So you think if 20%? sellers did did micro price drops every month, that would be more fair I don't, than I don't doing think it has like micro price. Yeah, probably because like micro dosing. Like, human, excuse me, human pythons. psychology would probably eat that better. Yeah, human psychology would eat that better. If a ten thousand dollar snake became ninety five, like DG clowns did that, right? But then people Clown just think it's did it tanks. too. I watched it happen, but yeah. it happened like well, over a month and a half. DG have... did it over like three weeks or something. <laughs> it should have been slower. <laughs> like if you had just edged down, I think if you edged down and just were on, I think that's on sellers to be honest about their market. Is it truly a? If you know there's a hundred of them, right? How many people are the suckers that bought right before the price drop? And feel bad, so bad they right. need a hobby, don't want to invest anymore. And I feel That's I do I'm feel bad for those people. Um, but some accountability is like maybe you need to hang out and breed your shit because you're gonna make back your money, it just won't happen in one clutch like you like you were sold we're the hoping. dream. And you shouldn't be selling like I hope people would not sell that dream. I know people do, to be fair. I know people that do. We all know them. <laughs> Listen, there's there's a part of the hobby that like and they're like my friends, so I'm not being mean. But they're they're so hyper optimized. They, you know, they do clutch analysis analyses that are like, how much money am I going to earn off of this clutch next yeah, year? I've done and that's those fine. Like, see what I could potentially do. Right, that's fine on paper, but in reality, that's, in theory and practice, don't always align, right? Right, but that's how we've communicated to COVID baby breeders that they should be like analyzing pairings and stuff is like what is the best way to make money, uh, which is fine. Like we want to be highly efficient, but like the the probability that, that your prices are anywhere close to that <laughs> with current pricing data to should then. should be doing like a 50%. I, I think the average price drop is almost 50%, right, per year. Especially once nowadays it is. It used to be like ten percent or whatever for like a minute during. When the they're really high, they tend to like go ten percent, and then at like some point, it drops like ten thousand dollars. They start plummeting, right? Well, let's we can look. I think some stuff is exacerbated by the stupid, uh, like this return to normal. It's not even really a recession yet. We haven't had two consecutive quarters of GDP yeah. loss. But the return to normal for like, you know, the the the, the problem is like, are we in a bear trap, right? <laughs> is there, is there the exuberance is sort of, are we in a bear trap right now, for additional fall? I don't know. I don't even going to bring that graph up. But when we say like additional fall, like how much is an additional fall, or just natural progression of the snake world, which is there's always been a downtrend of prices, right? Right, it's more a and everything that... reproduces itself, right? And it right. just reproduces itself by exponential, right? One male doesn't just produce one more male, it produces multiple clutches of males. What what month did I do the ball python stonks? The last stonk. A couple months ago, maybe January. Hmm. Because you would have done it for the end of the quarter, right? Right. Where, I did... like the stonk reports, they're fun. Stonk the stonk. Was Anyone it before chat? Will's Ask episode? Chat. Get them to work for you. I'm looking through the Lord. Will's Hella Heat also said, well, you look, 10K to 500 is hell a lot different than 10K to 3K. It is, but 10K to 3K is still a 70% drop. 
and yes, ninety five percent drop for the other one. But isn't it weird that there's like a weird difference between relative and absolute in this hobby? Yes. Uh, price falls because like it the feels stuff. different at different stuff. points. But then again, you're still making ridiculous money at three K snake, right? That costs you a hundred bucks to produce. Excluding your initial investment, but yes. So is that the right, you know, what do we need to tell people so they're not dissatisfied, but they we still want, want to also, invest? We also want to give confidence to our own market. How do we do that? Well, we should be honest and say, like, you're not going to see real money return for five years. The idea that you're going to come in and do it in two years is only if you invest like a quarter million dollars because you bought a bunch of almost breeder sized top end genes, genetics. That's the only way it's going to happen, really. Is it? But is it really more like 10 years? I think it's between five and 10 years. Does that inspire I confidence think five years... in like YOLO lifestyle, your whole 401k into the market? Well, so? if you did your whole 401k, you'd probably be closer to the five year mark. That's on how big your four hundred one k is, right? That's what I mean. But yeah, if you have no, if you have five hundred dollars four hundred one k, it's twenty years, and you're just gonna get out in three years because whatever you buy is gonna take you a long, long road to get anywhere. <sighs> Why can't I find this? It's I don't I don't like as we've talked about. Well, funny, we have this whole conversation for three hours, and at the end of the day, we don't have really answers because it's so we we don't really like we can't you and I can't make absolute decisions, right? We're not. The market's going to do what it does, and the market's going to make all these decisions for us. We can reflect on this in six months and be like, so what happened? Were we right or wrong? And that's it. Right, and we don't actually have to right, be so right, right or wrong. I'm uh, always right, so. <laughs> Maybe why I'm sitting here. Why was I getting this? Oh. Uh, we're talking about something. Drop price. No, how, what percent it drops drop. per year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is like 10 20 percent once it's already cheap but sunset sunset's probably a better one it was pretty like so That's pre 20 20-ish it went up the problem is the panda messes it up this but it's actually new for it but yeah it's getting faster now just like everything else is getting faster yeah but it will dreamsicle is probably a really good rate because you've got a long history of it so 3,900 to 3,100, that's not a big drop in a whole year. Male to male? Yeah. The right. female, and then the female, like the 3,000 to 3,800, that's a weird thing. But that had to be less numbers, right? Like just nobody really had them. Right. There weren't very many sold, period. But like 3,800 to 3,500 for females, that seems like these are pretty good numbers. To have them still be 1100 in 2016, and you were producing them all the way to 2020 through 24. Right, you should are, be happy ish. I think you should just be happy. Happy, if, he says. If you're producing 10 a year starting in 2016, you're making 30 grand a year for many years just off a pair of snakes or like a couple of pairs of snakes that cost you three dollars a feet a week. That's an incredible rate of return. So you think if if somebody bought dreamsicles in 2016, a pair, male female okay, pair, dreamsicles, yeah, and grand, they bred them in 20, grand. I mean 20, it's sort of a scam. 2019. Like, like if we pretend the panda didn't happen, males were still falling quite naturally. Like this fall curve is pretty normal looking. It's just the females that. So bought. when would you breed them? Let's say 2019, you bred them, right? And but you, you made, sold them in 2020. And you made. No, 2016, you bought them in three years. In 2019, you should have clutches, right? Well, you're breeding them in the fall of 2019. Oh, sure. You want to say 2020? So your babies are actually sold in So let's say, you like, what? You you bought a pair, so you have six babies on average, right? So you got 3-3 so three, you... three split. So what's Let's that? just pretend these prices are real. So that's yeah, yeah. 7000 So yeah. if you do 2000 is $5,000 a pair because it's 2500 almost for a female. So it's like, yeah, $4,500 a pair. $4,000 a pair. Can we do math? That's twelve thousand dollars, right? Right. So no matter what, it works. <laughs> it so only starts to seven. fall apart at the end. Right? So you bought it for seven. You didn't produce one until twenty twenty. So technically, it was almost four years before you saw like your production, right? 
and you right. sold pairs and hypothetically for 4, you could have read the mail earlier and yeah, pulled but some heads off them or something. For easy whatever. conversation, we're not going right. to worry about that. Just right. Almost no matter what, you will make your money back unless you like get Nido and they all die or you have a fire. Yeah, but terrible. But those are like you have terrible odds and so like But I'm like, you even did six eggs and you did bought a dreamsicle female that you had to wait three years to breed. The mailing mm -hmm. for whatever reason you waited three years to breed. Four thousand dollars a pair and you make twelve grand on seven thousand dollar investment. That's pretty good. Considering right. it wouldn't cost you five grand to feed them for 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 three years, right? No, probably two hundred bucks a year or something. Yeah, so you're like all in. Like you're probably up three four thousand dollars in the first year of production, and then all everything else after you keep breeding them every year, you're making money. Like you're making your your bill payments or whatever you want to make money off, right? Put your kid through college. Maybe not that. But you buy yourself a little car. <laughs> yeah. I think that the, the problem is, it's like, mm, all right, like, even though the math makes sense, people still don't make money. Why is that? Is it just too much cheap stuff? They get out too soon? Maybe they probably average. get out too soon because if the person sold out in 2019, they never see their money back, right? Right. People sell it all the time before they even breathe. They, or maybe Barefoot in 2018, stuff. they sell out the dreams of goals and buy something else. And then, so like, all the dreams goals are dropping, so I'm going to get the DG Clown and buy whatever, like, buy something else, right? And they spend more money or they don't work. Like, if they switch projects too soon, mm -hmm. that they, they chase it, which is a common thing. People start chasing. Um, They don't see their projects through, right? That's part of the reason. Mm -hmm. And the math always works out, but then people don't feel that way because maybe they take too much money out or it's not coming in often enough. Like, or they don't spend seven thousand. Don't forget, you also have that seven thousand dollars to buy two snakes. People don't want to spend seven thousand dollars on two snakes. They'll spend seven thousand dollars buying thirty snakes at five hundred dollars each. I don't know if that math checks out, but close enough. Right. It's just easier to like parse in your brain, even though it's more expensive to take yeah, care of. But and... people want to buy more snakes. Yeah. So they buy cheap snakes, and then they're like, "Oh, I'm only making five hundred dollars snakes instead of two thousand dollars snakes." I think the hard part now is like because the drop is happening fast and, and will was like don't worry about it but i still sort of think about it like you well, could buy something today this. and you would need to be dollar cost averaging in over and over again because it that one animal could drop 50 percent. and i agree with you also you could be like me when i first in, in, imported my first animals in 2009 i, I imported 1.1 hypo mojaves from tsk i got one egg out of the mail before he died randomly now i wasn't testing back then so i was like i don't know he right. should have died. Nothing else died. Just he Bradley died. He's my favorite too. But yeah, he passed away. He got one egg out of him, whatever. Because the first female I bred him to just had one egg. She didn't have a big clutch. And it's like, that just up and died. What am I supposed to do? Right. The system falls apart if there's too much, you know, stuff that... That's why people volume. Because they're like... Because you don't want something up and dying, you're screwed. <laughs> right. They're trying, Corey, to get it. they're trying to get an index fund. Instead yeah, of cool. on well, yeah. Corey stuff. Woods had to buy that Sunset Hypo because he originally bought like a Sunset Head Hypo. He bought something. Maybe he bought one already. But it turned out to be not a male. It turned out to be female. And he's like, I, I need a male. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to go out and spend a bunch of money. And, I mean, you want to keep progressing your projects. You got to pay to play at some point sometimes. Right. I'm definitely not never telling anybody not to buy the nicest version of something. Sometimes I, what I d doubt about ball pythons is if the pricing is right for how nice it is. Like, not, and not quality. I mean, like, is that morph even worth that right this second? You mean the morph itself? Yes. So like because because there's collusion because there's buddy prices. Because the price is going to drop. Like, right. So you're saying like anything. So like we'll go back to acid clowns. Acid clowns are really high priced, in my opinion, on Morph Market. Like combos are up there for like three grand. And I'm like, I don't know so if they're worth that. There's acid clown combos out there for 12 grand. And this and I'm is like, a combo clown. <laughs> it might, somebody mentioned about the ingredients. And my issue with that is when you breed this, unless you also spend 20 grand or 12 grand on a female cool animal you're gonna breed this somebody's gonna buy that twelve thousand dollar animal you're just making derivative pieces of the father right because you it's, there's no 
Right, the rarer pieces of the father. Level. And the problem is, though, only one piece of that is remotely valuable. And that's the acid heck clown version or whatever, right? Or acid clowns. Right. Let's say you just bred to regular clowns. Right. If right? it was an acid redhead. Yeah. I would see a little clown bit more. Makes but more acid, more yellow belly, spot. I don't know if these are actually all more for I'm just saying they have a bunch of common genes that if they're just clowned, they're worth they're $500 or less. Bucks. So you're not, you're going to be pissed off if you don't have those acid $10,000 combos. But I right, think. You could like miss the odds. I think fairly these, easily. I think the acid babies clowns are overpriced. Blackheads like Cypress. That's what I'm saying. Justin has a Cypress clown female for a thousand dollars on Morph Market right now. I think that's a fair price. I think that's totally fine. But is it in 2023? I think it's fair to start there. Like you want to test out the waters for 2024. Start a little higher. Yeah. I don't know if it's really going to be 500 or seven, but don't forget, as you say, Daddy Justin has a premium to his name, right? Daddy Justin. But I. He brought down like blackhead, blackhead clowns. Where like he put one up a mail up last year for like fifteen hundred, and he pissed off a bunch of people because in twenty twenty two they were like four grand. Right, but Daddy it's just a single should gene be allowed combo. to price them the way they're going to be. But I mean, people shouldn't get that mad because like if you made these for four, like this is where you talk about getting mad, right? Are you mad that you bought one for four grand now they're fifteen? I don't know. That's why I'm scared all the time. But you should be. I think you should be a little mad, but at the same time, the num we just proved it out really quickly with an unscientific version. The numbers will add out. If you bought a blackhead clown in twenty twenty two for four grand, a male, and then in twenty twenty three males are fifteen hundred. Maybe by the end of twenty, like maybe by the end of twenty twenty three, you're breeding, so you might have clutches now from him. And let's say you produce seven, like but you're not going to breed them to one female. You breed them to a few. If you made blackhead clown males, you're going to sell them for fifteen hundred bucks, and you're going to make back your four thousand dollars in three animals, plus your holdbacks. What if they're only eight hundred bucks because he okay, doesn't breed do it in, until he's eighteen months old? Animals. And then you do it in six animals. Right. It takes you a little. It just. There's no more, I'm going to replace this in one animal or one clutch. I'm not going to make my money back in one clutch anymore. Right. And you have holdbacks that are free, that are good. Yeah. You're doing my, stuff. All of that's always true. But it still makes, it stresses people out that like you always agree. have to go buy in high, watch it fall down, buy in high, watch it fall the down. The emotions high, are hard to down. ride. Even <laughs> I have to remind myself to calm, like to, to stay the course and like you have to stick to it. But that's why I have a cool milk snake and black milk snakes with my buddy because right, then I can play with cool animals. All then, the time. And then I can play with cool animals too and just be like, oh, this is fun. Look, Canadians. They're, they're and I don't know, see, I, well, Morphic is not, but he hangs out with us. But I told you, man, said, Canadians will show up. They better show up because we need to show that, Canadian. that all well, this shit I've been saying. The, the third hour. <laughs> all I can say is that for three hours I've been talking about like Canadian market just needs some breeder stuff that's not crazy. We're not crazy that we actually show up. Because if nobody showed up that was Canadian, then it looks like I'm just talking on my ass. Mm -hmm. I think you guys need to have more shows, more get-togethers. I think we need more, more shows. More YouTube like stuff that's like for Canadians, by Canadians, like a Canadian porn hub. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> whatever it takes. I, I would do – I think more shows need to go back to like people need to suck up the – pay the money to do shows. Everyone wants to do a show or something like that, but they want it to be profitable right away. And that's not always going to happen. Well, I put it this way. I know, but you shouldn't torture people by making them do unprofitable shows. Like Agreed, but life. I was going to say this way. You don't have to make a big show. And people need to start stop putting expectations to someone who's been doing shows for 20-odd years. And they've grown their show mm -hmm. to a bigger venue and stuff like that. Because the original shows when I was like 17 years old going to, and I was working at them, was they were in the top. They were in a legion. So I was 17. I couldn't drink. But... All the people that were over 19 would go to the Legion, go downstairs in the bar after and go drink, right? Mm -hmm. They were just in a Legion. That's where I bought my Pictus geckos. Just in a crappy little Legion. And sometimes you yeah. just have to grow it up and people need to stop. I mean, that's how a lot of the shows are in the States, right? Basketball thing. Yeah. Like church, community center. For gyms. Room, I've seen gyms. Gym. Yeah. And people in Canada just need to get off like it's going to be some big Tinley or something every time and be like, no, man, you just got to start somewhere. My my only advice with that is like put it in major metro areas. You have like a chance of getting yeah. a thousand yeah. people through so, the door just to look. That's what I mean, like Winnipeg out in Manitoba, right? Um, and people might just have to do really small shows and just get people like educate the public on on animals, right? On just having these as pets because that's where you start, right? You have to get yeah. more people in, 
and then they kind of grow into breeders. And mm-hmm. just because Constrictor Creation said it, if you bought Dreams in 2016, why are you still cranking out Dreams now? It was just an example of crank of just breeding the same pair over 10 years. Right. Obviously, you'd be like upgrading, buying different males. You left all that out just because it was, you know, it's right. too confusing. It just yeah, it does technically forward. like you could still make money even if you never upgraded the mail. Yeah, you just bred and the same pair over and over the same again. Year. Yeah, you just bred the same pair for over and so over. So most people should be able to make money hypothetically. I just think people don't keep doing it. Yeah, that's the answer. They just don't continue to move forward. They give up. They get depressed. Something happens. Their wife doesn't. Yeah, happen. and then they sell off their collection. Canadians mm-hmm. are care less about bull. I think that's, I think that's the market in general. People are shifting into other species all the time, but I think that's, I think that has less to do with bull python. Like that has to do more with money and less to do with like passion, and their passion is money, because they're. I think those people are trying to chase mm-hmm. the species. They're like, oh, I see hog noses selling. I'm gonna go buy hog noses. Oh, I'm gonna go buy, you know, mansion rat snakes or something. The, the, like, the way you know that is absolutely true is if when they get out, they don't keep a single pet. Yes. Like, you talk you know about I mean? that when people bought all these palmettos and like I made so much money off palmettos and they don't have a literally single corn fuck them. You're you're yeah. gonna sell out and not keep one happy pet of anything. Like if you're getting out of ball pythons, keep one. Keep one. You yeah, liked you, it you hypothetically. Liked it, right? They don't fucking actually like them. Actually, yeah, they're fucking li- they're liars the whole time. You can generally tell when people want it for just money. There are people out there just for money. They may like snakes, but. They're not passionate about snakes. You can tell that money's the number one driver. That's what's wrong with the ball python hobby. Too not, much money? Not, not, no, like only people wanting it for money. Like if people wanted it to make some money, wanted it to be a business, but they but they actually liked ball pythons and it wasn't just a vehicle for their creativity or something, I think it would be better. I think so in some ways it would be. We wouldn't be able to grow as fast though, I don't think. But That's fine. Who gives a shit? I would well, love slow growth, right? Because the, I would love, if I the price wouldn't growth. peak as high because there would be less hysteria. I change your language. I would say okay. steady growth. Right, steady growth. Steady growth is fine. Fuck, I don't, I, any growth will be good. Yeah. <laughs> Except well, for like this, we're in contraction right now. Well, that's always going to happen though. It boomed too far to be steady, right? It was always steadily growing. It just boomed too far and now it had to contract. And then we're double contracting. I say that because we took the premium off COVID, right? The COVID premium had to come off. And then you have the natural drop of years of like every year everything drops, like your graphs show it, right? On your stock reports. Every right. year drops except for COVID. And yeah, so, so we had to eat it twice. We had to eat twice. We had to eat two drops. The premium came off, and mm-hmm. then you had to go down. Have you seen the tulip mania chart? No. Okay. Oh, the tulip tulip mania? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know tulip. You, mania. you were yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I like the yeah. stock market is all the stock market is also having like, you know, like people debate whether or not we're at an all time high or not. And like the video re- earnings report, everyone's like, they did it. They're fucking holding up the whole fucking market. But obviously, like we're in a, a bubble of all kinds of assets. It's just Paul Pythons were easier to get out of sooner because they're like an absolute luxury good. Nobody cares. Pokemon cards. Yeah, plants. Pokemon cards are so funny. I, so all of those like fun hobby things, ball fight is included. Like so, we've taken the L's. We'll continue taking some L's, but new people are getting in. People like it. Just like actually like what you're doing. I think wouldn't I, that I, make you stay in more if you actually yeah, liked it? As I said, I'm like I got in as a kid, right? So I yeah. I'm in for life in a way, right? I'll always keep snakes that are fun. But the tulip thing, like I don't. I don't know the answer. Yeah, it's just like I don't re- think both pythons are, are like tulips or I agree. beanie the, babies. The but there's like one long. spark yeah. of interest, yeah. and because there's a commodity price. I was rammed in there because I was trying to think, remember my thought, which is, I've said this to many people. I'm like, if it's easy to get it, if the barrier to entry is very low, it's a very hard thing to be successful. However, you want to rate successful. If the barrier entry is really hard to get into generally speaking it's relatively easy to be successful afterwards and that's a general rule of thumb and if you, oh, look you mean at like world, like boas just, and white lips like they're harder to breed well i, I would grow up profession, and i would say snake breeding in general is very there's no barrier to entry if you want to breed white lips it's just you pay a slightly higher price that's correct but like, it, the, it there might a be a skill there is but, but that's what makes it a little more difficult right 
like maybe you will white lips are a little hard to take care of but slightly by very little you know but they're assholes well you can't treat a white lip the way you can treat a ball by them correct with, like also, not fresh water we'll so like face off so <laughs> at like eight feet too like they're not small as people think they are those no golden, they're not delicate little ones, snowflakes those gold ones whew, they come flying they're very pretty I do not have good experiences in my life with white lips. Let's just leave it at that. It's not even big ones, little ones. But it just, they have scarred me. All right. Last thoughts. I don't know. What, what are our last thoughts? Stick it out. The right. You, you only lock in your loss when you sell. Right. Stick it out. It Obviously, if you have life things taking you away, that's totally fine. Right. Take care of your family and your kids. and whatever. But stick it out. Snakes aren't going anywhere. There's always, and don't get caught by FOMO. There's always another snake, unless I'm selling it. Then you have to buy it. <laughs> or Jessica selling it. Yeah, please do. I got to plug the person that put me on her podcast. Yeah, or. Corn snakes, everyone, corn snakes, switch the corn snakes. Please. No, don't. I don't, I don't want people to <laughs> keep them if they don't like them. But I think I want to see that they're, that they're not just pet slop. Because they're fucking nuts if you look at them. You really look at them. I'm going to buy some Miami's from you. Okay. I'll ship you a wholesale pack. <laughs> you can That's sell them really in Canada. Cheap. I don't want to sell them in Canada. Actually, I probably will talk. That's actually not bad. I know people you, that probably want A lot that. of people are like that. I'm like, yeah, I'll just send you 20 to fucking Taiwan. Like, if you want two, yeah. I might as well send you 20. It's like not that much of a difference price-wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The price-wise doesn't matter. I'm like, I don't know if I can. You I don't just have to be able to sell <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I hope people are still keeping it, keeping it happy. I just, you know, enjoy like, your fucking snakes, people. Number right. We one. have this weird, like seasonal like bump right now. I think there's going to be doldrums again this summer. I think there's going to be a lot uh, of animals that's produced. Consistent. Yeah, this fall there's their seasonality to the year. Just don't get like too excited or too negative. Just keep having keep fun, keeping mm -hmm. snakes. Yeah, that's what I try think. Try a new species. That's kind of the conclusion we came to. Try a new species. Any or even just try selling cork or leaves or art because like that would you know keep your your spirits up. Yeah, you know? yeah. When you actually make money, Dylan McNeil, I know he's got carpet pythons. He he loves his new carpet pythons. Yeah, carpets are fun. Do no. everything. Buy some blue tongues also. Yeah, blue tongues are cool too. Right. Have fun. You can you'll you should be able to make money and. The only time you're not making money is when you're selling out to get out pennies on the dollar. Because you're correct. Never, that's, you're never gonna get your money that over. you think it's worth. Nobody the sharks will circle and you're done. <laughs> All right. Let's All wave right. to these beautiful people. We did it. Thank you everybody for we being here. It. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. Aaron, for we really did it. Canadian time. Pride Month. Oh uh, sing this sing the song. Sing us out. No, I can't National sing. Anthem. We're not doing it. Come on, no. a little bit. No, <laughs> a little, no, like, not 